I think that needs to be fixed. I think I never selected the right, the right audience. Like I always make that mistake and I keep making it. So let me see if I can fix it and then All right, guys, I'm about to edit the audience. If you can see it, once I've edited it, let me know. Otherwise, I'll start it again. Okay, here you go. Yes, sir. All right, thank you very much, woman of God. All right, good morning again to everyone. And um, we're going to go in. Okay. Good morning to everyone that's coming in. All right, woman of God, man of God, thank you very much for volunteering to pray for us. Bless you, Mother Angela. Welcome. Welcome to everyone that's coming in. As you come in, just share and invite so someone else can actually benefit from our service this morning. Good morning, Sister Stephanie. All right, guys, we're actually going to be starting off with prayer from Sister Ava and Sir Eric. Bless you, woman of God. You may go for it. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Oh, merciful Father, as we thank, stand here this morning I give you thanks and I give you praise. I bless your holy and your righteous name. I thank you for the unction of the Holy Spirit that is in this ministry right now in the name of Jesus. I thank those that are coming in right now, dear God, that the word of God would heal to them right now, dear God. Those that are seeking a, a word of God right now, dear God, I thank you. I thank you and I bless you. I bless the apostle that's over this ministry, Apostle Paul, right now in the name of Jesus, that when he opened his mouth right now, dear God, that the wisdom that is imparted in him, dear God, can be heard in this world in the name of Jesus. And I thank you. I thank you in no other name, but in Jesus' almighty name. Amen. Amen. Let God arise and our enemies be scattered. Again, I declare to let God arise and our enemies to be scattered that comes against the fire period. We tear down every evil altar, every evil entity. We cast it back to the pits of hell and everything that comes against we being your fire carriers against Apostle Paul and his family. We bind it, rebuke it, and put it on assignment back to the pits of hell. We thank you, Father God, for the fresh anointing that's coming forth today. We thank you for the form and the latter rain, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for anointed ears to hear the word of the living God and blessing our apostle with anointed lips, Lord God, to bring forth that word. We thank you, Lord God, and we bless you. In your precious son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Someone just give our God the glory and the honor that he deserves. Our God is absolutely amazing. There is none like him. None like him in the heavens. None like him in the earth. Bless you, woman of God. Bless you, man of God. Thank you guys very much for representing our God well. We're going to go in today. And as you guys know, I like an interactive session. We will be praying for those that need prayer. And again, good morning to everyone that's coming in on Zoom. If you actually said, give a shout out and I did not respond to you, forgive me. Good morning. We are going to go in and we're going to bring glory to our God. Who's with me on that one? I'm hoping that it will be an interactive session. I'm hoping that you're going to be curious. I'm trying to actually bring curiosity to the kingdom of God. Not curiosity to dabble in darkness, but curiosity that now that you have chosen Jesus Christ as Lord, 
that you want to know more. Amen. Amen. Like for me, I remember what brought me or what's still taking me as deep as I'm going. Hallelujah. I remember yeah. being in a position where I thought there must be more to life than this. Who understand what yeah. I'm saying? Yes. This yes. can't be it. And again, because, good morning. bless you, sir. Good morning. You might not have accomplished everything that you have set out to accomplish yet. But if you were taking stock, you would have realized that everything you achieve at every interval, after you have achieved it, it, it was not as big as you thought it was going to be. That's right. It was not as impactful as you thought it was going to be. Yeah. Or is it just me and Sister Dora? <laughs> Anyone else realize that these things that we are chasing, 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 yeah. once you get there, it's not as big as you think it is? Man, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. You think if I can do this, then I am I, I have accomplished my life's worth, my life's dream, and you get there and you need another target because that was not enough. Trust me, there's a yearning in every human that goes deeper than just our targets that we have set for ourselves in the flesh. All right, go for it, Sister Karina. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Okay, thank you, sir. So, I'm very curious. I'm very okay. So, I'm reading Exodus, right? And mm -hmm. I'm very um, um, Exodus 4, verses 24 uh, to 26. The part of Moses. I'm sorry, it's, it's kind of going out a little bit. Okay. Exodus 4. 24, 26, is that what you said? Yeah, I can hear you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so God tried to kill Moses because he did not circumcise his son, right? Mm -hmm. But what I am trying to ponder is that, like, didn't God know that Moses didn't circumcise his son before he sent him on this mission? And then he sent him on the mission and then tried to kill him. And if it wasn't for his wife, he would be a dead man, right? And you then know what I love? Yeah. I love your curiosity. I love your curiosity. Though this yeah, is not what not we're discussing, I'm going to take the opportunity and answer this for you this morning. It's not as straightforward as you, as you think. As a matter of fact, if you check, you'll realize that it was not Moses. It's, it's because we're reading it just what is presented. But have you ever actually read a text that there are some unspoken things, but based on the action of what is taking place in the text, it tells you of the action that took place prior. Do you understand what I mean? I understand. All right, so God sought to kill Moses, but notice Moses did nothing. Who was it that actually went and circumcised the sons? His wife. Okay, which means that they were told prior. That's the part that's not written. That's the part you don't see. That means if he is actually going to, if God is seeking an occasion to kill Moses and without explanation, his wife just went and literally just went and fixed the thing that needed to be fixed. Um, probably if we should actually not even a guess, but quite an educated guess if you want. Who do you think it is that actually objected to the, the, the sons being circumcised in the first place? Um, I, I don't know. I, I mean, the, the same one. If you, I can show it to you. If you find the scripture, you will see that the wife said something when she was actually about to to, to um administer circumcision, or after she has um she had administered circumcision. Who remember what the wife said? You are a bloody husband to me. Yes. <laughs> Listen. The only reason why the wife did it was because it was going to cost him his life. Come on then. If you read it and you would have realized that she would have objected to circumcision in the first place. Who know, who know this? Yes, sir. If you read it, you would have also seen that it was not Moses. Moses being the head of his house and Moses being the one that was actually given the instruction of circumcision was going to be the one to pay for it. No, this is not new. You would have realized also in Genesis 
that God actually gave Adam the instruction. But when he adhered to what Eve wanted, he paid the FTA price. You know this. Yes, sir. Yes, the same thing is it's like history repeating itself. Literally in a position where Moses was instructed to actually, to actually circumcise his sons based on the Midianites' culture, he didn't. His wife, literally, unless she is like psychic and really can read minds, she did something to save her husband's life without instruction. Who understand that? Yes, sir. That's because that was the area of disobedience in the first That's place. Right. That's right. So in truthful like fact, such, sorry, go on. It just seems like, yeah, it seems like such a harsh punishment, though. That's what it, it just seems like so harsh to kill you know, him. No, because you are looking at circumcision from today's perspective. Today's well, from today's perspective of circumcision, it's just ritualistic. Circumcision was as important then as salvation is now. Who understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Circumcision Covenant. was what set you apart before the blood came to distinguish you between you and heathens. The circumcision of the body was what was needed to show that you are not from among them, that you are different from them. So circumcision then is like a someone who refused to be circumcised back then would be similar to someone who carries the name of Jesus now only by words, but not by action. Who understand what I'm saying? Amen. Okay, all right. So, in other words, okay. you're a fraud. I understand. And you would not allow a fraud to represent okay. him. You know what I'm saying? So, so the circumcision oh, was literally just to actually show that, hey, you're in covenant with God. Remember, Moses grew up as a, Moses grew up as a, as a Egyptian. That's what I'm looking for, yeah. He grew up as an, as an Egyptian. So because he grew up as an e Egyptian, you have to understand he had Egyptian customs, Egyptian principles. You're about, an Egyptian is about to be sent out as a Jewish prophet. You better become Jewish. Because understand that at some point being Jewish became ethnicity. But understand that there were people that look exactly like Jacob and um, Isaac and Abraham that were not actually men of God. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. That means these people were from a specific area, specific race. So even if you move um, and you move somewhere else, you're still going to look like what you look like. That's right. You're going to look like your siblings and your siblings are going to look like you. <laughs> The only difference that changed, the only thing that set them apart was not looks in terms of skin tone or anything. There were other people walking around looking like them. That's right. What made a distinguishing factor between them was the fact that they were circumcised or not circumcised. They believe in the God of Abraham. Even though we made him the God of Abraham, that was because he called Abraham specifically, right? Yeah. But trust me, it's deep. But... um. When you go in and you read the text that is presented also shows that there's text that is there that is not written. And then you can literally easily read what took place just based on what is being said. So you can see that even when she circumcised her son, she was annoyed. <laughs> she didn't do it because she was happy to do it. She did it because he was dead. Or a dead man walking, eh? Right. So good question. <laughs> One other thing. Mm -hmm. um, right. He sent him to the king, right, of Egypt at the time. And yeah. he part, part, which made him like all of the miracles, all of the things that Moses would present to him, tell him that, you know, like God spoke to me and he's telling you to set the Israelites free, right? But it seems like he was just making the situation just like a little bit more difficult by hardening the king's heart. Like, what was the purpose of that? All right, understand this. So there's a lot of things that people do not understand about the Exodus. There's a lot of things. Um, all right, let me welcome Sister Lisa. And my mom is in the room. Guys, let me to welcome my mom also, please. 
there's a lot of things that um, is not understood. A lot of things that people actually go in and they're wondering where this thing of clean and unclean food come from. Check this out. If you don't know what you're doing, then you are going to go in and you're just going to use what you see right in front of you to determine um, what's taking place. You'd have to first understand Jewish customs, not Jewish customs, but um, I keep on forgetting Egypt's customs. Egyptian custom says that the Pharaoh is also a God. Who know this? That's not new. The head of the Egyptian state is also seen as a deity. That's you right. Know this. Yes, sir. So when you're seen as a deity and when you're seen as God, then guess what? Guess who's going to prove that you're not God? God, God is going to show you that you're not God. That's right. There's a lot of things that we don't quite understand. Well, I've been taking the time to study it. And I have been going through these studies with most of the fire carriers. We will do some more studies on it in the future but check this out quickly you're giving something like moses is out in the wilderness with these people they're about to actually go on um how, how would i put it? The, it moses went into the mountain to receive instructions what is the first thing that israel did as soon as moses went up made a calf and worship it Yes, but what the part that is not discussed is that people are thinking that this is new. Do you think this was Israel's first introduction to this calf? No, they went back to their old ways. 100%. They were covenanted, but they were paganistic. They had all the customs of Egypt. So they were Egyptians in everything, are in most of their cultures. The, the, the God of their life was not Jehovah. The God of their life was more than likely the Egyptian gods. Which they proved as soon as they got an opportunity. So check this out. So you're in a position now where you're looking and you see these guys going back to what they're doing. They're doing what they know how to do. That's right. Pharaoh had become a God in the eyes of these people too. Who understand that? You will see if you read the passage that these guys do not actually, I did not appreciate anything that Jehovah did. You will see that they complained at every single turn. You know what I'm saying? Or was there not enough graves in Egypt for us so you had to bring us here so we can die? Well, at least when we were in Egypt, we had, we had a need to eat. They're always complaining. So you will realize that not only God needed for God to convert, for God to show you himself as supreme, you must make your God as null and void. You understand what I'm saying? The God you presently believe in must bow before the true God for you to be delivered. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, yes, sir. Yes. You remember in one of these occasions that the Ark of the Covenant was actually stolen or taken by the, was it the Philistines? Philistines, yes, sir. Who remember what happened when they put the Ark in the Philistines in the, in the, in the camp of their God? He fell down and was destroyed. Yes. They came back and found their God laying in front of the <laughs> Ark. Amen. So it might have happened with fear of first, and you will see this as a consistent theme taking place throughout the Bible, because you will see that Nebuchadnezzar kind of got ahead of himself. And you will see that he also humble Nebuchadnezzar, sent him to eat grass like a cow. There's only one God. Amen. See, fear was exposed to power. There can be no question that he was exposed to power, spirituality. Amen. His magicians dropped their, their rods and they became snake just the same as Moses' snake. Mm -hmm. These guys had power too. Hence why we're saying that you can't just look for power to determine if it's God. That's right. If you see someone proclaiming God but his present is missing and his principles are missing, then it's not God. That's right. 
So don't just listen to what someone say to determine if it's God. God has certain characteristics, and if those characteristics are not met, are not being displayed, it's not God. Amen. I don't care if they're walking on water. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this magician, this American magician. Can't remember his name. Chris Angel. There you go. Walking on water. He, he, he walk on water too. <laughs> yeah. And we know Shaquille O'Neal is like, what? Heavy. Seven feet, maybe 350, 400 pounds. Big. And he levitated him over a mansion in sight of everybody. Who can say that man has no power? He's got power. That man doesn't have God, but he has power. That's right. So we must then determine whose power we are actually exposed to and whose power we are actually yielded to. Because let's not be stupid enough to think that there's not other beings out there with power too, right? Amen, that's right. But my answer, God needed to not just humble Pharaoh, but also Egypt. Talking about the dominant force that had had Israel under in captivity for literally generations. Hope that makes some sense, Sister Karine. Sir one, and then we're going to actually go straight into what we are going to discuss. Unless you guys are okay with the discussion, but this I really want to talk about. Go for it, man of God. Yes, sir. Um, as you were saying earlier, that sometimes um, a person prophesied it's the truth, but the source is not God. Yes, so that's why so, I, I purposely so, took it out so, and not say true, but accurate. Okay, all right. So the question is this then, sir. What mm -hmm. about a person who um, then prophesied to a person and then the person in return would say it must be God because no one did know um, the secret that they were carrying, but it wasn't really God. Is it safe to say that a person actually blasphemed the person who said it's God when it's not God? It's an unfortunate, it's an unfortunate thing, but yes. Because understand this, it is important that we do not pursue power, pursue God. If you pursue power, you could find all manner of things. You know this. Understand? Yes, sir. The prophet is not the only one that sees. There was a woman with the spirit of infirmity that was walking with Paul and some of the other disciples, and she was telling them exactly who they were. Good morning, Sister Swan. This lady was actually telling them who they were until they became annoyed and cast that spirit out. Who remember? That's right. That's right. So therefore, you can't just go in and just look at what it looks like to determine what is real. You must know God to know uh, when God is actually speaking. By the way, guys, it would actually make a big difference if I saw some of the fire carriers on Facebook inviting some persons in. How about that? Sounds good? Sounds great. And let me give a shout out to everyone that actually gave a shout out on Facebook. If I did not respond to you when you did, um, the shout out, forgive me. So we must then be in a position where we understand it is not as straightforward as we think it is, right? Not as straightforward as we think it is. So come on, guys. Fire carriers. Let us actually do some invites on Facebook. Let's bring a few more people in so others can benefit from what we're bringing this morning. Amen? Amen. There is someone here that is having something strange happening in your digestive system. I don't like what I feel. I don't know who that is, but if you will actually, um, if you will actually let me know who you are, then we will pray for you. Do not leave here with that. Amen? Amen. Me and Pastor, you were talking to me about it on Friday. Mm. Yes, yes. What have you, have you been feeling anything in your stomach? No, I haven't. Mm. All right, no worries. We will indeed pray for you. But what I'm feeling is pronounced. That means, you know. Yes, okay. you're right. Okay, no worries. We will pray for you before we leave. All right, guys, let us actually 
Invite, invite, invite. So people do things. Some I agree with you, woman of God. And I'm not sure why the notification was not sent, but invite a few people in because you know what? Um, I think it's because I might have started off. Before? I think it's because I might have started off from a, from a, a, a private page and then actually upgraded it to a public page. So I'm not sure. When I started the live, it was first private. Then I changed the audience setting and it went to public. So that might be the reason you were not informed. Okay, thank you very much. All right, guys, send these notifications out for me. Help to bring the family members in. All right, guys, we're going to be talking about gifted but not discipled, zealous but not led. Now, before I go in and before I actually start um, talking about this, who would like to actually, who, who know or have an idea of what I'm talking about? Anyone? Remember, today is supposed to be interactive, right? Yes, sir. There you go. Let's keep it interactive. Gifted. Bless you. Bless you, everyone. All the family members that are coming in on Facebook. Bless you. Share and invite. Gifted, but not disciple. Zealous, but not led. Who would like to have a go? There's no wrong answer. If you guys know the method of ministry that I do, then you know it's a discussion. You know that we don't just go in and just throw things out there. We're going to discuss it. We're going to make sure that people understand what we're talking about. So, anyone would like to have a go? Yes, sir. I think it's people who have been, many people who have been identified as having a gift and they've been thrown into ministry, but they have not been discipled. And also being zealous, there are a lot of zealous people out there. They have the charisma or whatever it is they think that they need to succeed or the, the power that they gain behind knowledge, but they are not able to be led. So that's what I think you're saying. Yes, yes pretty much. Now let's actually go in. We're going to look at a few scriptures, uh, well, a couple of scriptures. And we're going to go in, we're going to actually, um, I saw something while reading this earlier that I might touch in 1 Corinthians 13. Then I've read this many times and I only saw this, I literally only saw this this morning. Literally only just saw it this morning. So I'm going to actually, um, I'm going to go in and we will actually um, get this thing done. Sorry, I saw my family ringing me just now. But I'm actually alive, so we talk after. Gifted but not discipled. That is absolutely common in churches. As a matter of fact, you could take someone hooked on drugs, hooked on homosexuality, hooked on being a player, hooked on all manner of things, possessed to the core, but they can prophesy, and someone will call him a prophet, give them a mic, and not take them through the process. Who know this? Right. Yes, sir. Am I the only one that find this thing ungodly? It's ungodly. Am I the only one that find this thing cruel, like really, really horrible? <laughs> no, sir. You're not. Do you know that person is not being held? Do you know this? That's right. I have never seen it work, not even one time. I've seen it being hyped for a season, but I've never seen it work in a successful way, not even one time. Anyone ever seen it work successfully? No, sir. I've never. <laughs> Gifted. Those gifts need to be yielded to God. Zealous, full with zeal. You're really driven, but not led. That means you might have an handbook of what you think is right and wrong. You might have an handbook of what you think that is a correct way to do it. But have you actually consulted God or are you even in communication with God? Do you know how many people who are presently, and I did say presently, they are representing God, but literally they have not consulted him in anything about their representation? Yes, Jesus. 
Do you know how many people keep on teaching and preaching doctrines that they're going to have to go and change in a few years or weeks or months? <laughs> Do you know how many thus say the laws that have been spoken for someone to come back and say, oh, well, we know in part and we prophesy in part? Who understand what I'm saying? Too many, sir. All because... We keep on pushing gifted people to the front. That's right. Zealous people without connection are now on the front line. That's right. And if you want to see what zeal, then no one was zealous like the Pharisees. <laughs> it's the truth. Yeah, that's right. Now, this is not a bad session. It's an opportunity for someone to actually check. All right, all right, I have zeal. I love God. Um, I really want to serve in ministry. Okay, are you ready? And you're not ready when you can cast out a demon. You're ready when your life is clean. That's right. You're ready when God is actually your source. That's right. You're ready when you've yielded. Yes. You're ready when your motive for going on the front line is so you can be a servant. Yes. You're not ready when you wave your hand and the congregation fall. <laughs> You're not ready when you can give a word that is so accurate it's down to the T. You're ready when it's no longer you that is seen, but it's God. Hallelujah. If you can remove yourself from the scenario, then you're ready. You're not ready when you've mastered the Bible. You are ready when you know not even one scripture as long as you have God. That's right. You're not ready when you go to Bible school. Teach apostle. You're ready when you're completely yielded to God. Yeah. You're ready when you're ready to shut your mouth so his mouth can be open. Yes, Jesus. Then you're ready. And if you're in a position and you're seeking to truly be ready, the only way to be ready is to realize that you're not ready of yourself. Amen. Amen. And I've been in a position where I went in and I'm thinking to myself, okay, how are we ever going to be at the place where we can truly be an asset to the kingdom? When you come in, and you realize that the very thing that you're giving to the public, you need it as much as they do, you're ready. If you think that you're better than the people you're serving, you're not ready. If your boss is in yourself and not in God, irrespective of your gifts, you're not ready. Amen. Amen. And then you go in and then you ask yourself, I wonder how many of us will actually stop check, do an assessment and see if we are ready. Okay. Let me see if I can actually um, see it. Thank you very much for your sir one had a question on Facebook. Let me see it. Good afternoon again. Sir one, share it again, sir. I think I missed it. Are all Christians disciples? Are Christian sorry, are all Christians disciples? No. I are discipled. It. No. Do me a favor, sir, if you have it. Oh. Okay. Are all Christian disciples? No, I'm, I'm gonna ask it this way. Are you saying if all Christian is a disciple? Is that what you're asking? If that's what you're asking, let me know, please. My answer is. Every single Christian should be a disciple. I think you have no right to disciple anyone until you yourself have been discipled. That's what I genuinely, I, that's not, not just what I believe, but what I know for a fact. That's right. Understand. All right, so I asked this question. Who has ministered to the prophet? Who, who got what I just said? Who ministered to the apostle? Because who knows you can be a prophet but not of God? 
That's right. Who knows you can be an apostle but not of God? That's right. So who knows that the fivefold that is in the body is also replicated in darkness? Absolutely. So if everything that is in light is replicated in darkness, how do I know if you are actually an apostle of God or an apostle of, of, of the devil? Bible discipled you. <laughs> Good question. We have a question here that is asked by Sir Morgan, and he says, how do you know when you're ready? Let me tell you a secret. When the fear of letting God down, when the fear of the altar is upon you, when the consciousness of sin is upon you, because understand this, I think that what messes up Christian is that we believe that readiness means being on the same level, everyone has to be on the same level. So check this out. You can be ready to go out now and actually tell someone about Christ and still not be ready to actually go in into the deep depths of things. Who know this? I do. Yes, sir. Now, let me explain to you what I mean. Do not believe that readiness means that you need to go in and wave your hand and everyone's fall. Bless you, Sister Simar. Good morning. Do not believe that readiness means that you have to have word of knowledge for everyone in your congregation. The best readiness you can have is when your life is in order and you're now telling people about God. That is the most powerful ministry out here. Amen. Though it is not respected anymore, and though people don't embrace it anymore, understand what I am telling you as one, that I parade at the top in power and authority, yet I'm telling you that it's not the healing that I see that give me fulfillment in God. It's the souls that are turning to God that brings fulfillment. Who cares if you have a congregation of 5,000 persons and maybe only 200 is saved? What? That's a failure. That's not a success. As far as I'm concerned, anyway. You're ready when you see every soul as actually being valuable. You're ready when you're willing to speak what God says and not what you feel. You're ready when you put your ego to the side so the name of Jesus can be exalted. You're ready when you're only willing to see, to say what you see and say what you hear and not what you feel. You're ready when you will not be pressured by the multitude to give a word you were not given. So the, everything that I just told you that makes you ready in most places, it disqualifies you. Who know that? It's all about character. We were speaking earlier that there's also power in Egypt. If our only motive that we think we are ready because of power, then I guess we could literally replace the men and women of God today and just not call on Moses, but call on the magicians of Egypt and they would still have a godly audience. Who remember when Philip embarked upon the journey and he met um, Simon the sorcerer? Who remember the story? And who remember you if you read it, then the, 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 the they say they say in the scripture that the people had him to be a man of God. Who understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That means Philip, not not, not Philip, Simon the sorcerer, Simon the Hobia man. Simon the warlock, the wizard, Amen. was seen as a man of God until real men of God showed up. That's right. If yes, I told sir. you that it's still happening today, who would believe me? Yes, believe sir. Simon the sorcerer was actually held in regard, not as a sorcerer, but as a man of God. In other words, people... If you actually said anything about Simon, there would be someone telling you, you better not touch that man of God in case you get in trouble. Hmm. Why is it that one man could have gone into a community, a city or a town, even a village, and convinced them all that he's a man of God? 
Because none in the village knew God. Yes. None were disciples. None were disciples. Yes. Now ask the question, do you notice that when true men of God came and started discipling the people, that they turned away from Simon and they started following God? Yes. And do you notice that as they started following God, Simon himself repented and followed God too? Yes. See, the unfortunate truth is most of us are not looking for God. We're looking for power. Most of us do not actually want, as a matter of fact, I'm going to give you a checklist to let you know if you're ready. If your zeal doesn't come with fear or reverence, you're not ready. I got it. Who understands what I'm saying? Yes, sir. No, we're talking about longevity now. We're not just talking about having you hyped. Because if you're gifted, you will be hyped for a season. We're not looking for that. Mm -hmm. We're looking for men and women that will come to their expected end and not just an abrupt end. Yes, sir. What is my ambition for the men and women that the Lord has placed me over? That God Almighty, that you will not be caught with your trousers down. That you, five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, you will go in and you'll be able to say as Paul that you fought the good fight. Come on then. Eh? Yes, sir. That you ran the race, that you endured to the end. Hmm. Nobody yes. will remember you, how much you used to wave your hand and people fall if you're caught with your trousers down. Who know that? Sir. If you misappropriate money in the church, no one will remember the, 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 the cancer you that got healed. They will remember the money you stole. Mm -hmm. So don't seek a position. All right, understand this. The Lord told me that the most precious commodity on this planet are souls. That simple means that this is what God is concerned above all things on this earth. God is concerned about souls. Okay. So if you are actually in a position where God is saying, I am concerned about souls, and you then are actually in leadership, and you make it about money, and you make it about hype, and you make it about all this thing of showing who you are. As a matter of fact, if I ever see a man of God, and he's telling you that there's no one else like him in the planet and that he's doing this and you never hear the glory being given to God, I start worrying every time. Amen. Because I know that that person is a disaster waiting to happen. Not that I want that person to be a disaster, but knowing full well that it has not skipped anyone. It has not skipped anyone. Anyone that takes that approach gets the same result, eh? Yeah. All right, woman of God, we're going to go in and we're going to read Ephesians 4 and we're going to be reading from um, 11 through 25. We're going to take it stage by stage. We have this discussion and you guys will be given the opportunity to ask questions as well. Amen? Yes, sir. 11 through 25. Amen. Gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. I know you stop there for a second. Yes, sir. All right, let me see if we can, I, if I can get there with you. All right, so I want you to read, read it one more time for me, woman of God. I want to point something out. Yes, sir. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some and teachers for the perfect saints, for the work of the ministry. Okay, brilliant. You know what? <laughs> Sorry, woman of God. I just saw Sir Sir, I just saw Sir Morgan's question. He says, in Jamaica, from you say God. Come on, what's up with this thing? Give me a second. Yes. In Jamaica, from you say God, um, from you say God, he is an apostle. Oh, is who is an apostle? Or I think you mean who or not oh, right? All right, then. 
I can't even say I am first I can't even say that I'm angry at what you're saying because I used to say the exact same thing. As a matter of fact, not only did I used to say the same thing, the Lord called me an apostle for almost four years before I actually embraced being an apostle because I actually thought the exact same thing. But you know what? Isn't it really like telling that the question you're asking is actually going to be answered in the very passage that is being read? That's why I actually asked Sister Dora to stop for a second. So based on what Sir Morgan just asked, he's saying that if from you're saying God, you're an apostle. No, there there's specific jobs to be done, and we might not go into all the specifics today. But what I want you to know, I look at, I want you to listen to listen keenly to what is being read now, and that is from Ephesians four. Even just eleven and twelve will actually make it plain. Also, guys, share and invite if you're on Facebook. All the fire carriers should be sending an invite out to persons just so, just as we have Sir Morgan here, others can be coming in asking questions too. So I expect fire carriers to be doing their job evangelizing. That is evangelizing also, right? Yeah. Okay, woman of God, let's read this because I mean, literally what was, what was asked in the question was just answered by what Sister Dora just read. Yes, sir. And it says that he gave, gave some apostles. Go on, woman of God. Sorry. Some prophets and some evangelists and some and teachers. Stop there for, for a the second. In 12, it will explain to you what these guys are supposed to be doing. Correct? Yes, sir. Go on, woman of God. Let's see what it says. For the perfection of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So every prophet, every apostle, every evangelist, pastor, teacher, if they're not there, and we can read 12 to show you what they're supposed to be doing, if they are not actually for the perfecting of the saints, that means if you are a prophet and everyone around you is a pervert, you are not a prophet of God. If everyone around you is a pervert and you're an apostle, you're not an apostle of God. Can I just call a spade a spade now? Apostle pervert. Mm -hmm. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, understand that we who are in the fivefold, as a, we have a specific job to be done. And the job is to not bring everyone to my standard, but to bring everyone to God's standard. Come on, who understand what I'm saying? Yeah. That simply means that every apostle is there to bring edification edification to the church every prophet is there to do the same if your job if your only means of bringing edification is to wave your hand and collect money you're not actually doing the job that you were sent to do you understand what i'm saying that's right so this is what you can use to to, to actually then place what this if the fivefold is effective in the ministry you're a part of one is the person or the ministry of the fivefold within your your church bringing edification to the body perfection to the saints is it working in the body of christ so everyone will actually walk in power and authority or right. is someone claiming to be the power and the authority that's right apostle if we can then actually go in so how do you know if you're an apostle First, you need to be ordained by God to be an apostle or a prophet or an evangelist or a pastor or a teacher. But I've explained before that they are not the only ones that prophesy, evangelize, or teach. But we need to be in a position where you become the opola of the, of the office. You understand what I'm saying? Right. That's right. Quality control. That's what we are. That's right. So anything that has not passed inspection will not be presented as a gift. That's what we're talking about. Good morning, Sister Kimberly. But listen what 13 said. You know what? It's literally almost like um, a very good um, question because no one want to actually... 13 is going to speak to it even more. Go for it, Sister Dora. Till we all come in the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, 
unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. The fivefold is there, is literally to bring the church into the perfection of Christ. Isn't that what he's saying? Yes, sir. Until we all come into the perfection, come into the unity of the feet. That means, hey, if we are divided, the apostles are needed. Come on, then the prophets That's are needed. Right. That's the right. fivefold is needed because the churches are divided now. That's right. The body is divided. The, the body is fighting itself. Hence, we know, okay, I think I just, I don't know who's this that's ringing me, but I can't answer now. Um, I literally just realized too that I did not send the, the code out. I always send the code out for someone and I didn't send it today. I got caught up. The person is still ringing me, but I'm, all right, let me ring it. Let me turn this thing down. All right. All right, guys. So, being in a position where you understand then that it's not even a want, it's a need. Someone say it's a need. It's a need. It's a need. But you can tell if these people are walking in the correct office, if they are, if they are, um, how would I put it? living up to what god expects not what we expect right because it, it can't it can't be based on my standard it can't be based on your standard it has to be based on god's standard make sense awesome. must be based on god's standard amen all right here we go yes i think she's uh leaving a message but I, i'll take the message after this is over. So it has to be based on God's standard. Good morning, Sister Shami. It has to be based on God's standard. How do you know if you're an apostle or not an apostle? It can't be based on what you feel. I've heard people use the term. I've heard, as a matter of fact, I've had people say, I'm a prophet. And then they say, oh, which one is higher? And I said, that's not the way it works. <laughs> So an apostle, an apostle is the first office, yes. Oh, I'm an apostle then. You're probably a demon. Yes. <laughs> you probably need deliverance if you find yourself thinking like that. If what you're doing is not about the edification of the body, if it's not about the unity of the body, the growth of the body, the perfection of the saints, you are not actually operating in one of those offices. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Because now people have, have demeaned the office of the apostles and the prophets to, 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 to uh, wave in your hand and give in word of knowledge. Uh -huh. Someone say that's the body, the saints. Everybody can do that. Everybody should be doing that. Every single human being that believes in Christ has the right to prophesy. That's right. So that's right. not me saying it. That's Bible. That's so if right. you're using prophecy to determine what a prophet look like, you have disrespected a prophet. That's right. It's much bigger than that. Much deeper than that. Okay. Let me see something. All right, then go for it, woman of God. Let us actually um, keep going. Okay, sir. Verse 14. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. From all whom right. Don't move on yet, woman of God. I'll stop you one more time for a minute. Let's see what... 14 says again do you notice that he's telling us the importance of the fivefold in the, in the church he's telling us the importance of having these ministries so you can be discipled isn't that what he's saying yes sir you need to be discipled so you can actually walk as a true christian if you want to mature in christ you must be discipled that's right. If you want to walk in unity, if we were all discipled from the same system, there would be no denominations. That's right. That's right. 
If you and I were taught the same principles about Jesus, then I wouldn't leave thinking that Jesus is objecting to Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is objecting right. to Jesus. That's right. If we had the same Jesus with the same insight, we would not be confused about the different dogmas that have been handed um, handed down by men that did not spend time enough with God to know the truth. So now we are caught up in a system where we are literally having debate within the church. If when you're saved, you're saved forever, or can you actually be in sin and lose your salvation? You can be a sin and lose. If we were being led by the same Holy Spirit, these questions would have been null and void. That's right. If the teacher was the one that was doing the teaching and not someone that doesn't was not given that office, we would not have these problems. That's right, Apostle. Right. If we were being led by the Spirit, we would not be debating that That's if right. you don't speak in tongues, but you're living holy and have God, that you still have the Spirit. That's right. So now we as human have literally come in and we have decided what will make you save. So now no one is consulting the one that actually died to make us save. I am yes. telling you what the requirements are. You're telling me what the requirements are, requirements are. And now we're debating and arguing over something that has nothing to do with us because we are both followers of someone that is still alive, that still has a mouth, that can still speak. That's right. So why not ask Jesus what the requirements are? So the fivefold is, is there to make sure that we get rid of the denominations and focus. So someone said to me, oh, what about the fire carriers? Isn't that a denomination? I said, no, that's a <laughs> regimental name. Amen. Within the British forces, when I served, you had many regiments serving the same country, the same crown. The regiments are all called by different names, but God Almighty, their mission is, is all to protect and defend and serve the crown. All these regiments are loyal to the crown, irrespective of the name they have, irrespective of what they are called, they are all doing the same service unto the crown. But if you go in and you start taking doctrines out and say, okay, if you do this, you can't be saved. And if you do that, you can't be saved. And then I look at some things and I see how much religion cripples. Can I keep it real? Yes, sir. Religion is as crippling as sin. I promise you. Yes, it is. Because you could be caught up in religion thinking you're saved and you're deep in sin, but just not in the sin you think. That's right. So you right. actually said that person is not wearing a head cover and you decided that person is a demon and you didn't even consult God before you said it. You just call a Christian a demon. Who understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Isn't that what the Pharisees did when they did not quite understand what Jesus was doing? Yes, sir. That they started making things up as they felt and decided, um, let's find scriptures that... Um, that, that, that actually um, rebuke, that, that debunks what Jesus is saying. Okay, where we at? 14, uh, so it says, I'm going to read 14 one more time. It says, that we henceforth be no more children. That means you can be baptized, but you're a child. I don't care how gifted you are. Come on then. That's right. Jesus. You can be baptized and you could be 70 years old, but you're a child. That's right. Yes, sir. Now, if you have a problem with that, take it up with Paul, not with me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. That means there are Christians that are confused and they have been tossed to and fro. Come on then. That's right. That's With right. every wind of doctrine, that means the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, pastor, teacher is there to make sure that we don't just have all different kind of doctrine what? circulating. Don't you see mm -hmm. this is not new? This started from the time of Paul or even yes. before Paul? Yes, yeah. sir. Mm -hmm. And in case you think his doctrine, Paul was talking about church, church doctrine. 
in this passage. You know that? Yes, he was. Yes, sir. So that means if we need the truth, one who claims to be an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, pastor, teacher should be bringing unity in the church, edification for the body, growth of the body, perfection in the body. And then we will no longer be divided. We will no longer be children being cast yeah. to and through by, 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 by culture, by tradition, by all these different things. We will have the truth and the truth will set us free. That's right. So you might have chosen Christ. But if you don't know what you're doing, your doctrine could have caused you to not have chosen the right Christ. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes. If you don't know what you're doing, you might have chosen the wrong Jesus, passionate about, you've even actually gone in and you start writing your heavenly signature while on your way to hell. That's right. Thank God. Thinking you're saved, not realizing, that's the reason why I tell people I am non-denominational. I don't do church Amen. politics. I don't get caught up in that madness. Amen. I don't care if you're evangelical and you got something good about Jesus. I want to hear it. That's right. If it, you, the, the, the denomination doesn't automatically make you see it. There's sin in every denomination. That's right. And any denomination, I mean any and every, that doesn't adhere to the full leading of the spirit is prone to error. That's right. Flat out. So therefore, let us not ask someone what church you believe in and what's this and what's that. You want to be in a position where you literally will see that, okay, this has nothing to do with denomination because denominations never existed. So if they do know, where do they come from and who instated them? <laughs> okay, oh, Sir Morgan, you can get the link to me if you want, sir. If you want, it would be a pleasure. As a matter of fact, if you would like, if you would like to actually come on in and experience what the mentorship is, is like on a Tuesday or Thursday, it is free. It would be a pleasure to have you. So if someone can actually give Sir Morgan my connect, I would love to actually get with him. He has questions that I think are valid. I am as curious as he is, so I like curiosity, right? Okay, where are we at? Verse 16, sir. I don't even want to read John the 16 yet. I want to show you something in 14 I was about to leave. Check this out. It says here, by the slight of men, Mm -hmm. What does it mean by the slight of men? Because this is too important to, 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 <laughs> to, to, to leave. The doctor has to come through someone. And yes, that's do what me I a think. favor. Can you look up the word slight? Yes, sir. For me, I'm going to show you something very important. I'm going to show you all these things are so important. And we read them, but it's right there in front of us that it should not be overlooked, right? Mm -hmm. It means the use of dexter the use of dexterity or cunning, especially so as to deceive. Okay, like sleight of hand, like magic. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I wanted the fire Deceitful carriers, I wanted the people listening to hear. Go on, woman of God. Deceitful craftiness, dexterity, skill. Paul is still talking about this being in the church, isn't he? Yes, sir. Yeah. He's yes. saying that if the fivefold does his job, 14 again, that we ends for be no more children. But yeah. we'll be we 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 be eating um hard food or sincere yes. food. Yes, yes, yeah. Huh? Yes. That we will no longer be tossed to and fro and be carried about with every wind of doctrine by slight of men. That mm -hmm. means these men who are cunning, they're demonic, yeah. they're in yeah. the church, they know what they're bringing to you is a lie, but they yeah. want to actually cause you to be pagan like they are pagan. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. They will go in and they will start making stuff up and it will bring damage to the, to the body. Who understand what I'm saying? That's right. That's right. There's a lot of things that actually caused me to shut up when I became a man of God. That means I had opinion of things that I was totally wrong about, and I had to be willing to relent on my opinion. Who understand what I'm saying? 
Yes, sir. Yes. Then it says here, and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive God Almighty. There are people still right now, yes. 2021, waiting, yes. lying in wait to deceive. Yes. There is no requirement for you to live holy. Sow a seed and you will be okay. Stop That's your, right. your obia. Stop God. your witchcraft. That's right. Stop your magic. Where well, you're now telling people that as long as they follow your protocol, they're okay. The fivefold is not there to uphold or present their own protocol, but God's That's protocol, right. God's principle. If a man comes or a woman comes saying they're a prophet, apostle, whatever, and they're presenting their protocol, their principle, that's not of God. That's right. All right, let me see what Sister Kimberly said. It says, of a person are they built, not sturdy to strong. Oh, I thought, Sister Kimberly, you had a question also, right? Yes, I missed it? On Facebook. All right, go for it. I know. Um, I was saying, how is it that people believe that there is one devil, which is Satan, but they don't, they don't believe that there is only one God? I don't understand. Understand this. I want to explain to you that many people have been turned off by Christianity because Christianity has been infiltrated more than any other religion. So they That's could be proven to be not the truth. If we can just use Jamaica, there's many persons in Jamaica that could never embrace Jesus because the Jesus they see and the Almanac, they could never embrace him. They were actually enslaved or our ancestors were taken in a ship in the name of Jesus. So now people do not want to embrace that Jesus. But that doesn't mean Jesus is a lie. It means that liars took the name of Jesus and blasphemed it. Who understand what I'm saying? Amen. So you're yes. now in a position that if I come in and I say that Jesus Christ is Lord and I'm an apostle of God and I'm this and I'm that and next thing you know you catch me, I'm soliciting you, I am telling you to send me pictures and I am texting you telling me to send your number and all these things and now all of a sudden you hear that person saying all these Christian people are horrible, nasty, wicked people. And the name of Jesus is blasphemed because of people's actions that proclaim or declare that they are Christians. Isn't that the way it works? So I come in. I tell you that I am a Christian. Not only am I telling you I'm a Christian, I am now waving my hand and I'm telling you I am the standard. Who understand what I'm saying? And when a man or a woman present themselves as the standard, then you could literally have 50,000 educated people that will be brainwashed. Because even guys who are scholars pay to go watch magic tricks. Come on then. As long as our spirituality is stimulated, that's all we want. We don't care if it is being stimulated by a demon. Who want to hear the truth? That's right. That's right, apostle. We are looking for spiritual stimulation, not godly stimulation. That's right. Not godly encounter or godly connection. Spiritual stimulation. If someone can touch you and you feel something in your body, it doesn't even matter if they, it, it's a demon that's doing it. That's right. People don't know or care. So when you come in, because the scholar speed the speed, it's the nature of us human to want it to be done by someone else. No one want to put no work in. Amen. So you find people dying from these miracle cures all the time. I want to lose weight. Here's a pill. Take this pill and all the weight will go. And you didn't read the fine print, but you will suffer from internal breathing, may possibly die in five months. <laughs> but in death. <laughs> you just want to lose weight. You're taking a pill. Why not just get up and go for even a 10-minute walk every day? That's right. Nah. Who wants to go for a walk when it's swallowing a pill can solve the problem, except it can't? That's right. So when you are actually in a position, because I've seen it, people saying, oh, I pay my tithes and offering there. Okay, that's good. 
Is there a requirement for you to change? No. God has blessed me. God is blessing me. I'm paying my tithes and offering there. Is there a requirement for you to change? I think it's abominable now for you to be taking sinners tithes and offering. I genuinely believe that. Get in trouble, eh? Hey, Amen. You know what I'm saying Sir. is wrong. I genuinely, right. before God Almighty, think it's wrong. Yes, sir, it's true. If someone is in adultery, fornication, living a life that is ungodly, but the he or she is giving you his or her tithes and offering, taking their money, but you're not willing to tell them to change, I think Jesus. that's a mess. Salem. I have been in a position where I saw one guy that do you know what he does for a living? He's a professional gambler. He worked the casinos in the U.S. And he is the biggest in the church where I, that, that, that I went with him. He was the biggest donor. You want to say what I'm saying? He gives like no one else because he is really good at gambling. He makes a lot of money. They're afraid to address him and his gambling habits because he gives so much money. Who get what I'm saying? Yes. Sir. I believe that anyone should be addressed that is actually not living right. Everyone, sir. From the pulpit to the pew. Amen. That's right. That's what I believe. I believe no one is beyond the truth or is bigger than the truth. No one. That's right. And if I meet a pastor, apostle, prophet, evangelist, any one of these fivefold teacher that thinks, or any Christian for that matter, that thinks he or she is bigger than living clean or bigger than the truth, I don't want to even associate myself That's with you. Right. That's right. Because that is actually what God is actually bringing us all into. Is looking for people that is saying, I want truth. That's right. So he's saying that there's people that is that is bringing deceit. They're cunning. They're conscious of what they're doing, but you are not. You understand what I'm saying? So 15 says, what real men and women of God is supposed to be doing, part of the mentorship, part of the discipleship, is to speak the truth in love. Come on then. Yes, sir. And when you speak the truth in love, then we will grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ. Your baptism didn't make you like Christ. Your mentorship will. Your walk will. Amen. So if you feel because you prophesy, I used to hear these things, oh, I'm hungry because I'm a prophet. You're hungry because you have a hunger problem. That's right. <laughs> That's right. If someone is angry in you and it's not because of sin, you might need counseling. <laughs> you do. <laughs> yeah, it has nothing to do with, oh, oh, I, I'm, I'm throwing tantrum because I'm a prophet. Eh, no. Nah. That's not the reason for throwing no tantrums. That's right. Right? So when you speak the truth in love, you're now in a position where you're bringing edification, unification, all the things that was mentioned above. Eh? Yeah. You mentioned it above that that's, the, that's the, the, what the offices have been called to do. So in other words, he's saying, because remember, he's talking to saints. But if yeah. you notice, he says that 14, that we henceforth be no more children. That means you're baptized, but you're a child. That's right. You're a spiritual child. That's right. Irrespective of your, your, your physical age. That's right. You are a spiritual child at the place of, of birth. That's right. When you have been born again, whatever age you are, you're a child. That's right. My advice is for you to act as such. No, that doesn't mean you have to be remain a child forever or even on, on the long term. That's right. But it means that you are, because I grew, I grew up very fast myself. My ambition is that you will have all the spiritual vitamins that you fast to. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So when we say you're a child, it's not an attempt to keep you suppressed. No. 
It is an attempt that you will grow correctly. That's right. And if we can get you to grow correctly, then we will have people who will then continue the policy, the principle, the system of causing others to grow. That's right. If you are a Christian, but no one can benefit from your growth, you're not actually growing. That's right. If you're still fighting over the Gerber food product and the, <laughs> with other babies that coming in, then you're an everlasting baby. We need that's to go right. take you to the doctor and get you checked. That's, that's right. That's what we're here for, for the growth of every man and every woman. So it says that we must grow up into Christ, be like Christ. That means God Almighty, isn't that our aspiration? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Be he holy as I am holy. Yes. He expects us to be holy. Yes. Be he perfect as I am perfect. Yes. He expects you to be perfect. Yes. And I said this a few weeks ago that grace is on that, that, ah, uh, that God gives grace for growth, not grace for sin. Who understand that, that? That's right. That means while you're growing, while you're learning not to do the things that the whole man used to do, you have grace. That's right. When you become presumptuous, then you're an <laughs> enemy of the state. That's right. That's a reality. Yes. Okay, 16 women of God. Let's read on. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. God Almighty. So God has placed <laughs> limbs in the body to make sure the whole body is working correctly. Yes, sir. And the whole body is subject to discipleship. Who knows this? Yes, sir. Apostles, subject to discipleship. Prophets. Everybody. Even the fivefold needs the fivefold. That's right. Absolutely. Every one of us needs to be disciple, needs to be That's taught, right. needs That's a prophet, right. needs someone to make sure that we are not an idiot. That's right. Yes, sir. To not be because someone saw the future that you would be great in the future. They treat you as great in the present when you're a vagabond. That's right. Have enough wisdom to see the general. But also have enough wisdom. I have enough insight, I should say, to see the general. But enough wisdom to treat the second lieutenant or lieutenant. Treat them like they are. Until yes. they get to the state of being a general. That's Don't right. ever treat a captain like a general. That's right. There'll be a general in the future. And I don't mean long-term future. I mean when you're ready. That's right. And your readiness could literally take months, weeks, or decades if you don't know what you're doing. That's right. I love this. Someone need to contact Sir Morgan. He says, I know my life is not in good standing. I have, I have been living a lie. I need to be free. Not only to walk in God's forgiveness, but to be free. Let me tell you this, sir. I don't know if there's any way at all for, because I, I, I am one that analyzes language. He said, not just to walk in God's forgiveness because if you walk in God's forgiveness then you're free but you say but to be free which then implies that you need to be physically free too if that's correct say yes if it's not say no does anyone understand what I'm saying yes sir. trust me if you walk in yes, God's sir. if you walk in God's forgiveness you're free man of God are you free but if you're in a position where you're actually then imprisoned physically, then that too can be fixed by God and we stand in agreement with you. But if you can make it a little bit plain for me, then I will actually then know exactly how to target our prior. Okay, one of God. 
17. Okay. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having one understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work in all uncleanness with greediness, but ye have not so learned Christ. If so, Understand this. Yes, sir. Okay, so that's right. So that means you are physically locked up. I would like you to contact me. There's some things I would like to talk to you about that might not be appropriate to be discussed in this setting. And then we will actually pray and we will trust God that you will actually get exactly what God has in store for you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bless you, Sister Edwina. Yes. So we're reading here now. He says, this I say in sports, and in, in sport, sorry. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that in sport walk not that, that he in sport walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Now understand when you said this, he is indeed talking to the people of Ephesus, right? Yes, sir. So therefore, we know that these people are from a paganistic background yes. or a pagan background. But then when I start reading, it started going a little bit deeper. That caused me to start question. Is he just talking to them based on the fact that they were once pagan? Or is there something happening here that I don't quite understand? So listen what uh, 18 says. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, mm -hmm. through the ignorance that is in them, mm -hmm. because of the blindness of their heart, who being past... Sorry, read, read 19 for me, woman of God. I want you to read it so I can focus on that. Yes, sir. Who being past, feeling mm -hmm. have themselves over to, over unto lasciviousness to work all unright, <laughs> work all uncleanness with greediness. All right, Let stop me. there for a second. Yes, sir. Let's actually look at this. That should not be overlooked. 19 just seem like normally we just read it, but we move on. But it should not be overlooked. It says, uh, 19, where we at? Who being past feeling have given themselves feeling, have yes. given themselves. What does that mean? Language that, is such a unique thing that if you go on, one of God, let me hear what you're saying. I was gonna say, does, does that mean that they don't have any, um, I want to say compassion or, um, they have no feeling mm -hmm. of the loss. Uh, they have no loss of love is what I'm saying, uh, Apostle. And that's, well, that's the way I would interpret it too. But if you look at it, then you realize there is no comma there. There's nothing there to show. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Who being past feeling? If that is what, if it's going the way I think it's going and what you're saying also, woman of God, there should be a comma right there, right? Right, but there's not. That's just what I think. <laughs> there's not, which tells me that's not what is being said. Yes. Now, this is very important. Sometimes these things, I don't know, we might overlook it and you said, so what's the significance? A comma, another comma. Because meaning changes the word, the passages change meaning based on punctuation. Who know this? Yes, sir. So either it was mispronounced, mis um, punctuated. Art was left that way for a reason. Right? Yes, sir. In other words, if they, let's just say we're reading it from that perspective, but it's something for, for us to look at because their past feeling, who past feeling has given themselves over to lavishness and work, work of uncleanness with greediness. It tells you then, this I'm hoping that we can all agree on, 
that there was a prior state that they were not actually walking in this way. Who understand that? Yeah. Yes, sir. That there was a prior state that they themselves knew what the truth was. Yes, sir. Now, obviously, God Almighty, the reason, good evening, Auntie Inca, the reason why this is so important is because, let me tell you what it looks like to me. It, this is actually coming across as other Gentiles that were once Christians that were given wrong, given wrong doctrine that is now walking in sin. Especially if you're reading it, it in its, its entirety and not just in isolation because it's a whole passage that's being read. He's writing to the Ephesians and he's telling them what they should do and he's telling them what they should not do and who they should not be like, true or false. Exactly. Yes, I see what you're saying. So if we can go in now and we can actually read 17 and 18 one more time together, woman of God. Yes, sir. This I say, therefore, 17, and 18, 19. Yes, sir. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Mm -hmm. But, ye but listen to what he said. As a matter of fact, I'm asking all these questions, not just because of the pronunciation, um, or punctuation, I should say, but because of what he said here in 20. Mm -hmm. Listen to what they said in 20, and then that leaves more oh, questions yeah. than answers. <laughs> you have not learned, not so learned Christ. Which then implies <laughs> that he was still talking about people who learned Christ in a negative way. Yes, that's right, sir. I'm wow. not sure if anyone sees what I'm talking yes. about. Yes, yes. Paul just mentioned a whole bunch of stuff that they should not do and people they should not be like. And then he said in 20, but he have not so learned Christ. That means yes. these people have been taught a Christ that we don't actually recommend. Yes. These people have been taught a Christ that that's not the Christ we're talking about. Who sees what I'm saying? Yes, sir. These people are like the children that we don't want you to be like up in the verse above that are tossed to and fro. These are the result of that. That's what 100%. Paul... 100%. Yes, 100%. Sir. Now you're seeing what I'm talking about. Yes, because yes. now we're in a position where what is happening is that we are now, if we are not grown up, then we will take on these characteristics, which means that even the Gentiles he's talking about are people who were once convert are, yes. are even still at that time considered to be converts. Yes, sir. Except he's saying that their lifestyle is contrary to that which God recommends or promotes. Yeah. Yes. So when you, you understand now why you have to read these things in, in their entirety and can't just take one verse? Yes, sir. Because 20 is telling us that that's not the Christ that they learned. That's He's telling right. the church, the church that Paul is mentoring, that Paul is actually teaching, discipling, he's saying, he's saying, hey, I didn't teach you that. <laughs> we didn't teach you that about God like others did. Taught that's those right. other Gentiles about God. All right, we are at 21. Yes, sir. If so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth in Jesus, that you mm. put the Continue, sir. Yes, continue, one that, that you put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Now Where listen to this now. One second, I want to stop you for a second, woman of God. Yes, now sir. check this out. There is room given for growth, but there's no room given for stagnation. That's right. I hope, I hope to God someone understand what I just said there. Yes, sir. There's room given to growth, but no room given to stagnation. That's Jesus. 
So someone that's a young Christian coming in that is learning how to put on the new man because baptism or even you choosing is not yeah. automatically cause you to be the new man based on what Paul that's, is saying. That's right. So he said in 22 that he put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceit, deceitful loss. 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That means, hey, you made a decision, but your mind still need to be converted. Yes. Right? Yeah. How do you know when you are converted for real, for real, and not just going through the growth? If you have been a Christian for a certain time and you are stuck, then you're stagnating. You're not growing. That's right. Come on, then. That's right. There's a difference between stagnation and, and growth because when we find ourselves year after year doing the same madness instead of admitting that i have stagnated i said i am growing that's right abomination life from the pit of hell so he said here in 24 yes sir and that he put on the new man which is after god is created in righteousness and holiness that means he's saying if if, if 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 you are just coming to christ and you find yourself still struggling with a lie don't worry we're going to make sure that you stop lying come on yes sir can you still hear me yes sir i can if you are coming into god and you find you're still having the loss of the flesh and you still have certain things like fornication and adultery knocking at your door we're going to make sure as men and women of god that these things no longer knock at your door that's right. But, someone say but. But. If year after year after year, you're using mm -hmm. growth as an excuse for sin, someone say you're stagnated. You're stagnated. That's not growth. If you're in the same no. position year after year after year, then that's not, let's not make excuse for sin in that state. You're, you're not stagnant. But I got good news for you. Even if you're stagnant, if you're not dead, there's hope. That's right. Hallelujah. As long as you're not dead, you can get back into the, the, the growing lane and not in the stagnated lane. Amen. And we as men and women of God must assess ourselves to check and see if we have stagnated or we are growing. That's right. How we should know the difference, right? Yes, sir. Okay, 25. Wherefore, Let's see what 25 says, woman of God. Wherefore, putting away, lying, speaking every man, truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. And when he said putting away, lying, it, 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 it means false doctrine, telling yes. lies. It means everything that is wrong and not just, oh, the, the, the cup is pink and it's blue. That's right, right. So putting away lying is to put away everything that's a lie. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. We must put away what is a lie to put away a lie. One second. So we can actually do that, then we know that we'll be just fine. Amen. But we must put away the lie. Amen. If you put away the lie, then we'll be okay. That's right. All right. We've just read Ephesians 4, 11 to 25. I'm hoping someone is learning something. Yes, sir. It's very good. First Corinthians 13. Yes, sir. Before we move on, to first Corinthians 13. Do we have any questions based on what we are discussing based on what we have read just now? Anyone? Are there any questions? No, sir. Okay, so we good. Sister Kimberly's hand is up the old hand. All right, Sister Kimberly, go for it, woman of God. So, um, thank you, Sister to, Charlene. Bless you. Go for it, Sister Kimberly. Um, you were saying um, earlier that 
um, these people mm -hmm. believe, um, what do you say? Basically, they don't worship Jesus or believe in Jesus because of what they did to our ancestors in the past. So is it yes. that now that they still don't believe in Jesus, but they created a false Jesus, which is the devil that they are worshiping? Because All right, so put it like this. If I come in, all right, I'm sorry, go on. I thought you were finished. No, I'm saying because you have some of these Go people out here now saying that Jesus is a man on a ship and this, you have others saying that Christianity is just a business or they're just using Jesus to collect money and stuff like that. Isn't that what we're talking about, that people have called the name of Jesus to be blasphemed because of our actions as yes. people who claim yes. to be Christians? Yes, sir. I claim to be a Christian. I come in. If you know the sacrifice that I had, let me tell you this. I embrace any, or any woman of God that is actually aspiring to live clean. If I find you and you're struggling, but you really, really want to get this right, I, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand with you. I'm going to work with you. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to bring deliverance. See, if I find you when you're playing games i do not want to be around you that's right i don't want my name to be tarred right it's freezing apostle release finance He got kicked out. Yes. Yeah, so be that. One second, family. I think this the enemy is definitely fighting this thing, so I need to make sure. Let me turn on this. Can you guys hear me, buddy? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. I know it must be on Facebook. Let me tell you something. The enemy don't like when you bring these kind of teachings, so we got to fix this quickly, right? Amen. Amen. But if he thinks that I am deterred, I am not. Who is with me? Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. All right, let me see something. Amen. You are live on Facebook, sir. Amen. Are we still live on Facebook or is it off? Yes, sir. You're live on Facebook. Okay. All right. Is the let me see now if I can actually come back in on this. Let me tell you guys. You guys know the way this works already. Yes. You know, you know it's gonna actually um you, you know it's gonna cause it's it's gonna cause the enemy is gonna come in. And he is going to do everything to stop what we're doing. But I don't know about you, but I will not be defeated by him. Not even slightly. Amen. You know Amen. something I learned, Apostle, that mm -hmm. um that 
uh, the enemy opposes us even more when we preach the kingdom and what you're preaching about the kingdom. That's like war. That's war on his it kingdom. Is. So of course he don't act. No, you don't act to bring the defense out. Out. When, That's the when, God's truth. Yeah, yeah. But the kingdom is here, is coming forth in us, and ain't nothing he can do about it. Nothing he can do about Amen. it. When I am back on, let me know I am okay. Brilliant. Give me a second. Let me turn this thing off on this side. You're muted, sir. Um, you probably make sense to unmute myself before talking. I said I'm using my mobile internet. I'm not sure what's taking place with my um not sure what's taking place with my Wi-Fi. Also, can you tell me if I'm still live on Facebook? Yes, sir. Okay, brilliant. All right, so we apologize for that interruption. All right, someone bring me back to where I was, please. First Apologize for the Someone bring me back to where, where we were. First Corinthians, sir. Sister. Yeah, but you, you were explaining something to Sister Kimberly, sir. Yes. All right, Sister Kimberly. Remind me of your question again. And then I see Sister Simara's a question here. See my cousin Sister Solange or Johnson is on. Salute, cause good to have you. Go for you it again, were sir. explaining, you were explaining to me um, mm -hmm. about. <laughs> you were explaining to me. I'm sorry, sir. I'm at work. That's why. You're explaining to me about. Um, I was asking you that why it's. I was asking you if people created like a false image of Jesus or. Um, you said they were committing blasphemy, a sin that can't be forgiven, and then you were explaining well, that. Because it's against the sun, it can be, but it means that we are causing people to blaspheme the name of God. Oh, they by using to blaspheme Jesus. the name of God simply because. Yes, I am telling you, remember, when I go out, I'm telling people this is the standard of Jesus, right? Yes, sir. If I say this is the standard of Jesus, then I am saying this is what Jesus is about. Therefore, if I fornicate, I'm saying Jesus is a fornicator. Who knows that? That's right. That's true. If I steal, I'm saying he's a thief. We just don't think that far to understand that we are showing the people what it looks like to be a Christian, a man or woman of God. But now, sir, understand you, that there um, are many things. Mm -hmm. so sorry, sir. So I'm saying, but if you're doing the doing those stuff and preaching Jesus, you are not of God. Of course not. It says not everyone that says Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom. It's right there in front of us, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Understand that Jesus would not have told someone to do certain things to other human beings. That's right. Understand that Jesus is not going to tell me to tell you to give me your kids money and you have no food. That's right. Do you get what I'm saying to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There are certain things that we say is Jesus. That Jesus is, if you want to know what Jesus is about, Jesus is love. That's right. So therefore, if you're in a position where someone is actually showing what love looks like, demonstrating love, then that is a clear reflection of Jesus more than someone saying, I'll wave my hand, you'll get healed, but That's you must right. give me the dollars. That's right. That's not Jesus. The person that ex exhibits the character of Christ is living Christ. That's right. So you coming in and tell me that you're going to actually convert me to Christianity by chopping my head off, that's not conversion. That's right. So that's the reason why many people, come on, they, they, would anyone even suggest that the Knights Templars were Christians? No. 
That was like a straight odd cult. Yep. But yet they have left us, they have, they have tainted Christianity. Who know that? Yes, sir. So when people want to show you when other religions are being violent and doing certain things and you say, well, why are you doing that? They bring up the Knights Templar and if you know them, you can't debate it. Right. Except you have to go back to the foundations by saying, well, let us preach what Jesus said and not what we are doing. Right. That's right. That means if what I am doing contradicts what Jesus says, I am not a Christian. That's right. So stop using apostles and prophets and men and women that are in church to determine if it's God and start using Christ to determine what's of God. That's right. You notice that Paul said in one scripture that they're preaching another Christ. That's right. So if we're not going based on the precepts of Jesus, then I'm no represented. I'm no representation of Jesus. That's right. So search for Jesus in the man or the woman to determine if the man or the woman is of God. And if you can't find Jesus in the man or the woman, then I would propose that the man or the woman is not of God. Or about That's that. right. Irrespective of who the person is. Irrespective of the person of power. That's right. What about those who come to God genuine, but you found out? Come on, this thing is... Yes. What about those who came to God genuine? But then you found out that their mindset is tainted. How does that uh, recuperate? Uh, how do they recuperate from, from that? All right, let me explain something to you. I'll bet a lot of persons who were Christians but had wrong doctrine. Any Christian, if you find yourself searching for God and you find yourself in a cult, I promise you you're coming out. I'm not guessing if you're coming out because those who are pursuing truth will find Christ. Amen. That's the Thank assurance you. I have. Yes. How do I know it? I wasn't looking for Jesus. I was pursuing truth. And in my pursuit of truth, I found Christ. So I am confident that even if you, if you found yourself in witchcraft and you feel like being a witch is something good because you're not killing people, then the God that you're pursuing will show you that witchcraft is wrong and you will come out of it. Come on. Then. That's right. That's right. I'm fully, fully, fully convinced yes. that if you are in a certain denomination that you know is not of God, but you didn't know when you joined it. If That's you're right. It is truly God. God will expose you to this. Yes, he will. So I am not worried about people who are caught in the lie. I'm worried about people who are not caught uh, or are not pursuing truth. I am fully convinced that any brother or sister that is pursuing the one true God but was introduced to a lie that God will take his own out. 100%. If you want to hear the truth, I have examples of that right now in the fire carriers. I could show you many fire carriers that were exposed to wrong doctrine or occultic doctrines. But as they came in, how did they end up here? They were pursuing truth. They might not have been pursuing the fire carriers, but they were pursuing truth. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And in the pursuit of truth, you will find God. So, sir, you're saying we're not supposed to pursue God. We should pursue truth. I if mean, God is the God truth. And truth is one and the same. Yeah. <laughs> but let's just say you're in the pursuit of God. Not the God, you know, just God. And someone said to you, Allah is the way. Zeus is the way. Mohammed is the way. Selassie is the way. So now did you find God or did you actually um, find he God? find a God. But if you pursue truth, no way that Allah is going to stand up and tell you he's the truth. He wouldn't be that brave. Muhammad wouldn't be that brave. Selassie wouldn't be that brave. Um, Buddha wouldn't be that brave. None of the Sikhs um, deities would be that brave. No one that is in any of these things would be that brief. Why do you think so many Muslims have met Christ? They were, they, once they start pursuing truth, they met Christ. Who know that? Yes, sir. 
Why do you yeah. think so many guys who are in Judaism, if they pursue truth, they find Christ? I they see sure the do. church doing something that I find very distasteful, very ungodly. And I'm going to say this, but I need to explain it so I am not misunderstood. I am not anti Semitic. I'm a Semite. <laughs> Amen. I'm a Jew. That's not no, oh, I think I'm Jew. I know I'm Jewish. Amen. Those of us who have the true insight will understand what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. But check this out. Being Jewish is not enough to save you. That's right. So we could sit here and actually debate who the true Jews are until the cows come home and the true Jews are still going to hell. Come on then. So now it's no longer who is Jewish, but who is in Christ. Come on then. So listen Amen. what I see happen that I don't agree with. I see people embracing... I see people embracing um, Jewish customs and they're incorporating Jewish customs into Christianity. Yes. Who know why that is ungodly? Because that's all a shadow and he's already come. Why? They are Why'd looking for common ground with a custom that says that Jesus is fake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, let me wear this on my head and let me blow this. Blow what, mate? They are telling you right now that the people, let me tell you this if you don't want to know. I, I, I hope I'm not di I, I hope I'm not being diverted to something else, but I need to tell you this. Can I tell you this? Yes, sir. Speak. You cover your head to try and be Jewish. It says that the Messiah has not yet come. Who understand that? That's right. That's right. You blow the chauffeur to be more Jewish. It says that the Messiah has not yet come. So if you really, really want to be a part of these systems. You go in and you, do you know that the people you're forcing to be like dismiss everything that started Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to Revelation? Who understand that? Thank you, God. That they have dismissed the whole New Testament all the way to Revelation. And then you really are going in trying to embrace, embrace what? Sir, it's lack of knowledge. It's lack of knowledge, but we will still pay for it. My God. You drink, you drink poison with lack of knowledge, you need hospitals still. <laughs> Man. I advise those of us who are trying to get into all these things. Oh, I know the Jewish fast. Let me explain to you what the pass after fast, the Passover, which everybody is telling me that Christians should be following because it's what they used to do. Guys who have not yet experienced the Messiah studied, are still keeping the Passover. That's right. They are. Because the Passover literally is a shadow of the Messiah. Who knows that? That's right. That's right. The Passover literally means the Passover lamb, the blood of the lamb that actually speared the Israelites from death in Egypt. Yes, if sir. you're still using the Passover blood, then Jesus' blood is null and void in your life. Oh my God. So when we go in and we feel the need to do all these things, know what you're getting yourself into. Get an understanding that the people who are embracing these things know what they believe. You better know what you believe too and don't just jump on a, on, on a bandwagon. Now, if you believe that Jesus Christ is not Lord, then fear enough. You see, there's, there's a lot of things and that's the reason why I believe everyone should be disciples and not just become excited over a doctrine. Oh, do you, have the, you have the Moses anointing. Of course you don't have the Moses anointing. Anointing means to be commissioned or the Moses commission. I could understand if someone said the mantle of Moses is upon you, but to have Moses as anointing, it contradicts everything about the Bible. Who knows that? Yes, sir. For you to have Moses anointing, then it means that there's some people stuck in Egypt. Moses forfeited and God chose you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally what it means. For you to have the Elijah's anointing, then Elijah forfeited and God chose you. Now, let me explain to you what I mean. 
David had the anointing of the king. But if you read the scripture, as soon as the anointed rested on David's head, the anointed left Saul's head. Who noticed that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Two One person job. cannot carry the same anointing. That's Bible now, I'm telling you. Two persons can carry the same mantle, and the mantle is the ability to operate similar. But the anointing is the commission, the mission that you've been sent on. Then if someone has my anointing, then what am I supposed to do? Am I retired? Am I dead? No, sir. So you can't have my anointing, nor should you want my anointing. You can want the mantle on my life. You can even want the gifts on my life, but you can't want my anointing. And our anointings can be intertwined, but our anointings, it's individual. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So there are some things that we have embraced that is as ungodly as Satan himself. Oh, you have the Abrahamic anointing. Oh, so you're going to be the father of many nations, mate. And the Messiah is going to come from your lineage. Jesus. I wonder if we understand what we're saying when we say these things. Yes, I'm understanding now, sir. Let me <laughs> tell you I'm the worst before. one I have ever heard that scare me. You have the messianic anointing. What on God earth did you just say, mate? Should I be running from you? Are you the mark of the beast? Are you the antichrist? Because if you have the messianic anointing, that means that Jesus is not the Messiah. You are. <laughs> Anyone understand these things? Run, run from that person. Yes, I'm understanding no, sir. <laughs> so when these things sound good, and many people are doing it from an ignorant place. Oh, yeah. you have an anointing, the Moses anointing. You don't have the Moses anointing. You might have a, a, a mantle of Moses or even an operation similar, a similar anointing or a similar function, because the anointing is not the demonstration of power. The anointing is the commission. The mission that you have been placed on is what the anointing is. Understand, sir. I understand. So there are some things that we speak on our head, and you were actually, you were now operating in power. And someone said, you have the Moses anointing, and you stagnate because you received it, and Moses is dead. And there's no one stuck in Egypt, so how can you have the Moses anointing? And well, you're saying, well, that's not what I meant. It doesn't matter. The way the spiritual realm work is the devil works on legalities. Are illegal. If it's illegal or legal, that's what the spiritual realm wants to know. It doesn't want to know what you meant is what is being said. Who understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, so sir. your child annoy you. And you open your mouth and prophesy over your child and say, you're good for nothing. Nothing good will come of you. You're speaking from a place of frustration, but you just made a declaration. Who understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. When you start understanding spirituality, then you understand that, oh, what I say means something. What I say means something. What I put out there means something. What I put on my head means something. The customs I follow mean something. So I always tell people, don't get all denominational. Don't get caught up in religion. Get caught up in God. So though we say fire carriers, if I come in and I start talking something that sounds like I'm making myself the deity, you better log off. Well, I would. Amen. Amen. Anyone that is claiming to be great must be telling you where their greatness comes from. Amen. All right, woman of God, we're running out of time. So let's read 1 Corinthians 13. Sir, there was answers in the room. I don't know if you saw that. Oh, there's... Uh, one was Zoom? about... One one was, what did you say the mantle was? And the other one was, what's the difference between the mantle and the gifts? All right. Um, I missed it. Let me see. Sister if I Sanjay... Ones had a question what did you say the mantle was the mantle is the ability to operate for example let's call a speed of speed there are many fire carriers now that can do what i do operate like i operate but before you met me you couldn't let's call a speed of speed now true sir yeah i'm not offended by that you have all the right to operate within the same mantle as me because we are on the same and similar mission but you can't have my anointing because if you get my anointing, I'm a dead man. I'm, I'm decommissioned. Do you understand what I'm saying? Understand, sir. 
So you can keep your anointing and, and hold on to the mantle. You don't need someone else's anointing because your anointing was meant for you and mine was meant for me. Who understand me? Yes, sir. So if you embrace your anointing, trust me, God will work with you within your own anointing. You said there was another one I missed. Sister it. I Oriana just... said, what's the difference between mantle and gifts? So what's the difference between mantle and gifts? The gift are not just gift, but gifts are within mantles. <laughs> Ability Amen. to operate is within mantles. Amen. So the mantle is that someone that is commissioned has been given a set authority and operation. And then what you call, you have a sheriff and then you have the deputies. Who understand what I'm saying? Deputy sheriffs? Yes, sir. Yes. So the sheriff now has the right to deputize once the government has actually given that person the right to be a sheriff. Am I saying it correct based on the American system? Yes, sir. So now the, the sheriff goes out and get deputies, deputies. And then these deputies now have the same operational jurisdiction as the sheriff. Come on, then you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir, understanding. They have the right to arrest, the right to do this, the right to do that, as long as they've been deputized. So now you're in a position where you have the same right as the prophet, apostle, pastor, whatever, to do what he or she is doing because you walk in the same, the same um, commission. The same commission, but the same mantle. The same mantle, yes, sir. Yes. But if you... If you embrace your own anointing, then the greatness that God has in store for you will come forth. But if you're busy trying to get someone else's mantle, you miss your own. Yes, sir. Amen. Because now you're saying that what God had in store for you is irrelevant. My God. Because someone else's mantle has been exposed by him or by him or by her embracing what God has put on their head. So now you have literally neglected your own walk and now decided i want your walk and then yes, most time it doesn't want. work out for you who know that yes because you want to be the same person want find to be your own same. identity there's nothing find your own identity to actually operate the same but you're not me and i'm not you you yes, don't need sir, to be me true. nor do i need to be you amen and there's nothing wrong with you embracing who you are amen because your greatness doesn't come from being me it comes from being you you be you in Christ and see what God has in store for you. And you still have the right to operate in the things that you have inherited from me and you being in covenant and being on the same walk. Who understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So if you know these things, it makes all the difference in the world. Did we have any more questions? No, sir. So, okay. Apostle. Mm -hmm. Apostle. Go for it, woman of God. Um, with Elisha and Elijah, I don't, I don't remember the difference, but, um, when one of them died, the other one, he must have said he wanted to be like the other, something like that. No, would did that you notice? Be him? I'm sorry, go on. Oh, I was saying, would that be him taking up his mantle instead of him actually walking in his own anointing? But if we did read Elijah's our Elisha's story, we've read both and we realize that they, they, they both did great things, but the mantle he inherited from Elijah hated him in his walk, in his own walk with God, in his own mission with God. Who understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Even if someone else replaces me as the apostle of the ministry, it doesn't need to be me. She doesn't need to be me. They just need to be follow the same principle because the principles are not mine. Who understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes sir. sir. The principles are not mine. But if you go in and now I come to the end of this journey, I'm no longer over the fire carriers and God has selected someone to go. You're going to have to go in and follow the principles, but do what God do within the principles and not what I am telling you to do. Who understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the water and they were divided either and there and and is it thither <laughs> so that they 
sorry, so that they too went, this thing I can't see clearly, over on dry ground. And it came to pass when they were gone over, Elijah said to Elisha, ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee that a double portion, a double, a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Who understand that now? Yes, sir. So what that literally means is a double portion of your operation. Yes. Of your spirit. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. No, oh, thank you for sharing that, Sir Travis. You can put it in the room. It's 2 Kings 28, um, 2, 2 Kings 2, 8 through 14. I didn't read the whole thing just now. But understand, who remember that there was also a time when Elijah did something and it did not re react and he said, the God of Elijah. That's right. That's right. Amen. He knew how to use the mantle. Bless you, Sister Amen. Janine. And understand that you have the right to use the mantle. But find out, why am I telling you this? What I'm telling you is super important. Get to know who you are in God. I am not here. I'm here to inspire you, not to deter you. I don't want you to be so caught up in my work that you miss yours. I don't want you to be so caught up in my anointing that you miss yours. You understand what I'm saying here? That's where mentorship comes in. That's where discipleship comes in. All right, we had Lady Bridget that was asking a question. Woman of God, I see her hand is down, but I was just waiting to get to you. I really want to hear your question. You, what you have to do. Mm -hmm. One sec. No worries. Yes. Um, I wanted to ask... Um, mm -hmm. Are you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, I wanted to ask um, in terms of our ancestors being mm -hmm. enslaved. Yes. Um, is it that the those persons who took our ancestors and who professed belief in Christ mm -hmm. was it done out of greed and also was it a curse coming from? The enslavement of the Egyptians, the of the Israelites, sorry. Yes, both is real. One, I know that it was being done out of greed. But I also know that a curse was upon our ancestors' head based on them turning away from God. That means they were being punished. But if you use the Bible, you will see that God used nations to punish his people all the time, but that doesn't mean these are the, the people that do it are justified. That's you right. Pay, right. You still pay. That's right. Understand that God used Nebuchadnezzar to, um, to enslave Israelites or to actually take them by force simply because of what um, his people were doing. Right. So if you go throughout the, the Bible, you will see it happening over and over and over again that he will get invading forces to come and to put people in captivity based on exactly based on them actually not living up to their agreement just their contract with him That's their right. covenant with him mm -hmm. so i would say both is right based on what you just asked or what you just said thank you thank you you're welcome Bless you. all right where we at any more questions if not we're going to read First Corinthians 13, and then once we get there, we'll bring this to an end. We're here, sir. All right, yes. let's get there. We're going to Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not charity, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though right, I have... So the I want, to, I want to take you, I want to stop okay. you at intervals at different... Uh, each time you read um, verse. each verse, I will stop you. What did I say? First Corinthians 13. 13. Okay, here we go. All right. So if he's saying you can speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but if you don't have love, you are you become a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Can we then actually say you can actually have all tongues of angel and of men and none of God? Because remember, yes. God is love. Yes, sir. Amen. All right, then let's read two. And though I have the gift of prophecy 
and understand all mysteries and all knowledge. And though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. So you mean that you can tap into the spiritual where you have spiritual knowledge? Yes, sir. You have faith where you can actually cause things to happen, but you don't have God? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Let's read on one more time, woman of God. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. It's kind of weird, isn't it? Because based on what Paul is saying, it means people can be doing charity and even feeding the poor, but still can't yes. stand them. Yes. My God. Yes. That My means God. not everything that is done, not every charitable act that is done is done from a place of charity. It's That's done from right. a place of love. That's right. Amen. That is the reason why I do not agree with churches that are actually feeding people and want people to see. Yes, sir. Imagine someone can't eat and before you give them the dignity of eating in private, you put a camera in his face That's and right. feed him in, in public. That's right. That's right. So though you just went in and did a good deed, but didn't do it from a place of love, it profits you nothing. Nothing. That's right. All right. Let's read on woman of God. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Five, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, and thinketh no evil. Six, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Seven, Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Eight, charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Up there for a second, woman of God. Do you know that I have read this many times and I literally only found out what this meant? what this means this morning when I was actually looking at it for this. And I don't mean I went in and read it anywhere. I mean, I was just reading it just for the service and the Lord showed me something and it blew my mind. There was so much to unpack above, but I'm not even going to touch it because I want to show you something from eight. Is it eight we just read? Yes, sir. Charity never yes, failing. All right. So can we change the word from charity again? To, to love, love and from love yes. to God. So can we yes. actually read this Yes, sir. one more time? And I'm going to show you what he showed me this morning. I hope you are excited about this revelation as much as me. <laughs> yes, it sir. says, God never fail it. Go but on, whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether that there be tongues. you can prophesy and yes. it has nothing to do with God. And it will yes. fail. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> whether mm -hmm. they be tongues, they shall cease. And Whether when you actually see woman of God, I wondered what this meant. And I heard a million explanations. I understand it now. Where there is tongue, they shall cease. But, he's always... but understand this. What tongue is he talking about? If our language, we get in a spirit. Then a tongue yes, but you see, we have <laughs> literally taken just a literal understanding of what is being presented. And we did not... Like sometimes you get the habit, <laughs> and, and I try my best not to do it, but it can happen to anyone where you put verses in isolation and you not we stop seeing that it's a part of a whole and it's not isolated. Huh. Right? Look at this. Read seven for me one more time. Read six and seven, woman of God. Six, seven, eight, and I'm going to show you a pattern. I'm going to stop you at intervals. Yes, sir. Rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Okay. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. In other words, if Lots your tongues be in God, your tongues cannot fail. My God. If your prophecy is in God, Jesus. your prophecy cannot fail. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Understand <laughs> that, <laughs> that we, did not, we literally, <laughs> literally are in a position where I don't know where it came from, but we thought, and I'm going to say we because I thought the same thing, 
did that too. it means that oh love is gonna uh, that, that 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 tongues is gonna fail that's right that's a right. prophecy is gonna fail <laughs> but paul was telling us all along that anything that is not underpinned by love is it fails it fails yeah it's he literally started the statement by saying what did he say okay love never, never fails. fail sister judy so if love never fails and we know that God is love, so can we now actually just say it as it really is saying? God never fails. But when you have prophecy without God, it fails. Yes. Mm -hmm. And something. when you have tongues without God, it fails. <laughs> yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love you. And when you have you. knowledge without God, it vanishes away. Yeah. Amen. I got huh? Yeah. For listen what Paul said in prophecy now. He's telling you prophecy without God because God Almighty, I needed clarity for, clarity for this yes. for years because I found this thing disturbing. Yes. I heard people say we know in part and we prophesy in part. And I thought to myself, that sounds like someone making excuses yes. for getting it wrong. Yes. yes. That sounds Jesus. like someone making excuses for getting it wrong. But that's not what Paul was saying. That's right. Huh? Amen. Listen what Paul said. He says, without love, I know in part and I prophesy in part. Yes. That's what he was saying. Yes. This morning when the, when the Holy Spirit showed it to me, I was like, Ooh, God Jesus. Almighty, I got it. I got it. I understand now. Yes, Daddy. See, you notice that we read the whole thing and this whole theme is about love, retaining love, retaining love, yes, retaining love. Yes, and then yes. when we get down to nine, for some reason, we read it as if love is present and then we are still prophesying in part. Yes. Mm -hmm. wow. What Paul was saying is if, Paul, if, if love is not there, because what? Love never fails. So how right. can my prophecy fail when I'm prophesying in love? <laughs> Jesus. God yes. never fails. So how can my prophecy fail when I am prophesying through Christ? God is love. God is love. So check this out. He's saying, hey, listen to me. He says prophecy will fail. That means if you don't have God, prophecy will fail. That's right. And if you don't have God, then your knowledge is, is, is going to be wasted. That's or right. it's going to go. I just couldn't believe it when he showed it to me because that was something that disturbed me because I have heard it used as excuse yeah. for getting prophecy wrong. You understand what I'm yes. saying? Yes, sir. I have to. Oh, we know in part and yes. we prophesy in part if you don't have love. So you admit That's you right. don't have God. <laughs> Jesus. Hmm? Yeah. But listen what 10 says, man. And I, I can't dance because I'm sitting down, but God <laughs> Almighty, when I read it this morning and he showed it to me, I was having a conversation with God. And when I saw this, I was like, God Almighty, I, 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 I salute you for showing me this. Mm -hmm. hmm? So look what he said in 10, just to bring it on him. Huh? But when that which is perfect is calm, then that which is in part shall God be done almighty. away. <laughs> mighty God. <laughs> when he yes. who is perfect is functioning yes. through me, yes. that which is in part is gone. Done. Hallelujah. Yes. My God. So this thing about us actually prophesying in part and knowing in part is an Jesus. admission we don't have God. Jesus. <laughs> it's an admission we don't have love. Yes. Wow. Paul says, unless we are saying that he who is perfect have not yet come. That's <laughs> that means the Holy Spirit Jesus. in us is not the embodiment of perfection. Jesus. And we need to wait until judgment for perfection to enter our body. No, that is not <laughs> That's true. Lying. When how do we know that he's talking about the spirit? He, Jesus says he will pray the Father in, he will send you another That's comforter, right. even right. the spirit of truth. That's right. That will lead you into all That's truth. Right. All truth That's sounds right. like perfection to me. That's right. Sir. Who will lead you into all perfection? Yes. Mm -hmm. The job of the spirit of God is to bring perfection to people who are not perfect. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. The quicker we understand that we were making excuses for giving out a live verdict, 
Jesus. And that goes for me, for you, for everyone. Amen. Let us hold Amen. ourselves accountable That's and right. not give ourselves a pass because you're the one that got it wrong or I'm the one that got That's it wrong. Right. Let's repent. Yes, let us sir. see truth and move That's on. That's right. That's right. Yes, accept it. But a lie is a lie irrespective of whose mouth is coming from. That's yes. right. All right, let's see, Sister Abena put her hand down, so I'm going to start with her first. I was just coming to the question. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it, woman of God. I'd like to hear what you have to say. So, Apostle, this is my mm -hmm. question. If yes. someone has prophesied over your life like 20, 30 years ago, and it has not come into tuition, that means he's, he's prophesying from ego and not from God. Then. I want to tell you a secret. Oh, prophecy works. Whatever God says must come to pass. But sometimes we see a vision and we call it a prophecy. We understand what I'm saying. What is seen is subject to change, but what is spoken can never be changed. You understand that? Yes, sir. Amen. Now, let me explain to you why this is so important. Hmm. I gave a prophecy about two and a half years ago when I came to Jamaica. It's about two and a half years since I've been here, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Two. Two? Two and a half, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, somewhere there. So, I gave a prophecy. I said it not based on my feeling, but based on what God said. I said it when I just came to Jamaica, but over the period of being in Jamaica and watching things play out, I wondered if it was going to actually happen the way I said it, except that I didn't say it. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And then the person I gave the prophecy would remind me, Apostle, remember you said this, I'm going to see if you're a man of God. And I thought, well, I know I'm a man of God. But I heard what God said. And let me tell you something. When it came to pass, it was so spot on. You ever seen one of those prophecies that you say what you hear and what God said and you think to yourself, God, he didn't even have to go that, that, that straight. He could have literally been a little bit more, you know what I'm saying? Because you see God do it in such a way that your humanity kicks in and you're thinking to yourself, God Almighty, that doesn't even seem fear, but based on what God said, it is what God has said. Who understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Prophecy. The first thing you should do is assess who prophesied over your life. Where were they? What place were they at when they prophesied over your life? There are things that we see that subject to change. And we must now decide if we are prophesying something that is subject to change. Like, for example, you tell someone, it's like Jonah. God sent Jonah to Nineveh to, to warn the people. We know what the prophecy says, that destruction is coming upon them. But Jonah wanted the prophecy to be so literal that he didn't want to warn them because he wanted them to actually have what the prophecy warned of. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There are certain things that God has spoken that our words, our actions will change it from happening because it's a warning and not a, and not a conclusion. You understand what I'm saying? I understand. So when someone gives prophecy, there are some things that must be taken in, in consideration. Is it a prophecy based on action? For example, there's prophecies in the Bible where Israel was given prophecies by God coming out of Egypt. And if you do this, you're going to do this and you're going to do that. And that's going to happen to you. And all this is going to happen. But if you do not follow my precepts, then I will cause this to come upon you and cause that to come upon you. So that's the part of prophecy that many people do not actually take the responsibility to do. You understand what I'm saying? I understand, sir. I understand. Where I come in and I tell you the things, but I don't tell you the contingency are telling you, what should I say, the, the impact if you choose not to follow what, what were the instructions? Is it a prophecy without instruction or a prophecy with instruction? These are things that when we are speaking need to be presented and need to be made plain. Mm -hmm. Also, is it something that God said or something that I am feeling? 
if I'm a spiritual person, then it also comes down to, is it something that I'm picking up from you? What if I tell you that your desire can be to have a husband and I will literally come in, tap into what you're feeling and start prophesying that you're going to have a husband and not prophesy that you need to get your life in order. We know that. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yes, that's right. So this spiritual thing and this prophecy thing is much deeper than we would actually like to, 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 um, to admit. But if someone prophesied something 20 years ago and it didn't come to pass, then it's time for you to go in and to see if the breach is on your hand, on the person's hand, or was it something that was not even meant to actually be spoken in the first place at that point. Amen. And if you can do an assessment to see if there's a breach, because that doesn't necessarily mean there's a breach because it took 20 years either. Who knows that? That's right. That's right. Uh -huh. True, true. But through our spiritual highs and through our spiritual senses, you can now go in and ask, did that person prophesy in part without love or did they prophesy through love? And if that person prophesied through love, it shall come to pass. Okay. But if the void, if, 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 if love is missing, then it prophesies us nothing. That's right. That is the reason why I do not allow everyone to prophesy over my head. Amen. Amen. even with what you're prophesying is correct if it's not coming from a place of love it's not coming from a place of truth that's right so I have people who have prophesied some really really good things over my head and I'm like back to your belly back to your belly back to your belly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 all right I've ever seen a mother <laughs> that is actually I'm going to give you this now and, and see if I can put it in perspective. You know a baby that is not yet at the place where they can eat hard food, so you crush the food in your mouth, mm -hmm. baby, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Would you allow a stranger to chew the food in their mouth and give it to your baby? Absolutely. No, 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 no sir. Mm -hmm. So if you came and saw a stranger chewing food in your mouth to give to your baby, what would you do? Mm. Upset. 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 You'd be upset, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> so if God is giving his baby some food and someone come with an ask them out telling me back to That's your belly, right. back to your belly, back to your yes. belly, back to your belly. Don't That's speak right. nothing that God has <laughs> 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 Yes. That is the reason why I personally do not allow people to prophesy over my life unless your lifestyle is actually up to par. Because what you're doing instead Amen. of actually cementing is announcing. Amen. What's the difference between cementing and announcing? When a man or a woman that is in standing prophesies over your life, it's not just words. Right. It's also authority. Right. Yes. Sure. When sure. someone that has no standing prophesies over your life, it is words. It's an announcement. And so you just announce me to the enemy and you don't even have a slingshot to help me. God, Jesus. You just said, hey, he's hiding over here, snitch. <laughs> yes. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. My God. That's exactly what's happening. Mm -hmm. So I know what I'm talking about when I say I don't want them to. Because listen to me, when I speak over your life, I'm not just giving you a word. The power that God has put on my life is also, is also fighting on your behalf to secure what has been spoken. Right, yes, sir, that um, is so true. But if someone speak over your life that has no standing, then what they're going to help you with? They're just announcing you to the enemy. That's right. So true. I don't want nobody announcing me to the enemy. You better know what you're doing if you prophesy over my head. That's right. Mm -hmm. You better be willing to do what I do too. If I have to keep my choices on, you're going to have to keep yours on. And if you can't keep yours on and you prophesy over my life, back to your belly, back to your That's belly, right. back to your belly. Me, yeah. Announce yourself. Don't announce me. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and so, an apostle, that is why I like that you come in with a teaching where you, you train the fire carriers not to tend to want to gravitate towards prophecy. Oh, but God. build a relationship with God. 100%. Because if the relationship with God is built and I come in tainted, then your spirit will never sanction me. I've had people prophesy to me and I just put myself on mute and give them a whole school Jamaican. <laughs> prophesy over who? Right? Okay, for sure. Yes, yes, indeed, woman of God. 
Come prophesy over me. And I'm not saying you cannot be fixed, but until you fix, I ain't driving your car that is shutting off every two seconds. Oh, that's right. I know that's right. And you, you the outside is hot, inside is hot. I wind up the window, you kill me with carbon monoxide poisoning because <laughs> your engine is in the inside and everything. <laughs> and you were trying to do good. You wanted me to make it to work, but you killed me. I didn't even make it. I died. Mm. <laughs> huh? I'm going to let us give you the chariot of God with fire to purify everything impure when Amen. it is spoken. Amen. That is the reason why prophecies from Isaiah and all these men were called in as legit and others have just been discounted because That's you have no right. right to speak over the king. That's right. Amen. No right to speak over the king. Hallelujah. So you better know who is, who is announcing you. Because if you if they announce you before you were prepared, they left you naked out there to be That's battered right. by the enemy. Thank you. <laughs> So when people speak over my life, that is not up to scratch. Back to sender, back to sender, back to sender, back to sender. Uh -huh. Why are you saying back to sender? But it's a good thing. Yes, but it's not a good mouth. Back to sender, back to sender. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. <laughs> you have to know what you're doing. Your greatness yeah. can be destroyed or deterred because of the wrong mouth upon your life. That's right. Yes. That's true. I don't want to. Nah. <laughs> I, I, I say this. I can do bad all by myself. <laughs> yes. Apostle, my question is, when rebuking or sending back distraction, where should I send it to? Send her or to the pit of hell? Well, hell. it's religion that says hell. <laughs> <laughs> hell is not yet in terms yeah. of the fire. Yes. Uh -huh. So if you send it back to hell, it's going to go out of a cheeseburger and come right back to you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm. Yes, sir. <laughs> when you send it back to hell and it's like, oh, wow, he doesn't know that there's no hell yet. And she doesn't know that there's no hell yet. Uh, let us wait like one week to show you think we're in hell and then go give them uh -huh. hell. <laughs> uh -huh. Huh? If it was sent to I'm me, I send that. it back to where it's from. Oh, amen. So the sender literally means if it's from the dry places, go back to the dry places. Dry places. Oh. If a witch sent you back to the witch, oh. <laughs> if a wizard sent you back to the wizard, wherever you came from, I am sending you back to vengeance to your place of origin. How about that? yes sir but don't send it to hell i i don't sometimes Amen. i don't correct people because when they say it if you correct them they'll be offended but you're sending something to hell when hell is not even manifested yet nothing is in hell right now okay Amen. so you're like so in other words when you say back to hell all you're saying is it, it, whenever God calls the day of judgment, you're going to be punished. Well, it, duh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but I want you to be punished right now. Yeah. How about that? It's, right. That's right why now. I'm a pastor to wait. So you notice that when I want that's them to feel hell, what do I say? Who, who have heard me say it before? I Four give you a foretaste of hell. Taste of hell. <laughs> Where, sir? I give you a foretaste of hell. That means hell ain't, you ain't gone to hell yet, but I'm bringing hell to you. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> let you feel the fire yes <laughs> I'm going to torment you in 2021 though I don't know when judgment is coming yet you're getting tormented today because you were dumb enough to touch me that's right you can get it. oh yeah you send it back to hell and it will literally go have a picnic with his mates and say ah then people don't really know what they're doing you know? right <laughs> that's right. Yes, you know please. Spiritual legalities means we can't just talk, but we should know what we're talking about, you know? True, true. If hell has not yet been manifested and you send someone to hell, what's going to happen? Where are they going to? <laughs> Nowhere. Right? Oh, yeah. It's like someone gave me $1 million US and said, give it to your older brother. I'd be laughing my head off. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I have no older brother. <laughs> you just gave me one million dollars. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Understand wording is everything. Legal. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's not because we might be passionate about it, but that doesn't mean it's effective. That's right. Legalities. The enemy is not afraid of you. He's afraid of legality. He's afraid of God. That's right. All right. All right. So, so what about those who gave, who have vision about hell with Satan sitting on his throne? There is no throne in hell for Satan. The only hell, the only throne is hell is the throne of God. I know it makes people uncomfortable because we don't, we have been misled on what hell is about. Hell is a righteous place that brings judgment against sin. If you want to know who's executing judgment in hell, it's God, not the devil. I there know is that. no throne. Yes, sir, I know that. The devil presently sits on the throne. But I guarantee you when he goes to hell, he will not be sitting on no throne. Not one. <laughs> he will be tied up. And ask water, water, I need water. No, you get fire. Now, the first time I thought that hell is a holy place, I know it rubbed people wrong, but I'm going to tell you something. It's the truth. Hell is a holy place because unrighteousness cannot bring judgment against unrighteousness. Come on then. Teacher, yes, no. Ask yourself this question: Who is it that's administering judgment in hell? The devil or God? God. Uh, of course. So, so God. hell is a holy place, true? Yes. Oh my God. A fire goes before him and burn up all his enemies. Yes. Who do you think the fire is? Jesus. Oh my God. The same fire that is in us. So when I want Satan to feel what hell will feel like, we who are fire carriers fire, open yes. our mouth. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank For you. taste of hell. Because the fire that will torment you in hell is already living in me. Huh? Amen, Apostle. The fire of God is what administer judgment. Not the devil is not, has no jurisdiction, no operation, no power, no nothing when he goes to hell. Is just subject to judgment, subject to the fire. Why do you think demons, when we send the fire, demons be coming out so violently with people vomiting demons and demons screaming? It's because we are tormenting them. The same fire that we use now, only thing that it might be temporary now, but it will be permanent at that point. But understand that the fire in hell is the Holy Spirit. Who understand that? Yes, sir. The fire in hell is the spirit of God. Amen. I have said this. Yes, sir. That I, for someone that was in the dark hearts that have come to God, I will listen to them telling me about the things that are wrong in the dark hearts. But I have said this. I cannot see a witch being my teacher in Christ when I have dedicated so much time in, in Christ. I'm just being as honest as I can be. I believe that if someone was a witch or a warlock and their lives got turned around, you should come be discipled and let God be given to you. Amen. Because you were high in the devil doesn't mean you're high in God. I'm just That's right. Amen. That's right. That's right. Because you have jurisdictional authority in the dark kingdom doesn't mean you have jurisdictional authority in the kingdom of light. Amen. True. And if you see someone that was caught up in the dark hearts coming in, being great in the kingdom without being discipled, then th th they're in trouble and whoever has entertained them is in trouble too. Because based on what the Bible just said, when we read um, Ephesians, then we, we are babes at first, aren't we? Yes, Simon the sorcerer that was the head Hobia man in his village or the voodoo man in his village, came in and followed the disciples so he could be tutored. And That's then right. we are actually going in now, taking ex-Satanists and put them on the altar and let them teach Christian. Who That's on right. earth actually put this in place? My God. And then you if I it. say this, then they say, you're too arrogant. Oh, no, 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 I'm not arrogant. No witch can't no. teach me about Jesus. That's I right. I teach witch about Jesus. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. No warlock can teach me about Jesus. I teach warlocks about Jesus. 
Amen. So your spirituality might be high in darkness, but come so I can teach you how to be high in light. Amen. We must be mentored. We must be tutored. Amen. Well, guys, I think we can actually, I don't even know. Let, let's read on. Let's read on. Where are we at, woman of God? Let me uh, get verse, verse 11. Verse 11. Yes, sir. When I was mm -hmm. a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. What does it mean? It says, when I was a child, that means when I did not have him who is truth, I told right. lies. Right. When I have him that is truth, I no longer tell lies. We must now receive the truth that is here now so we can walk in what God has in store for us. Yeah. All right, 12 women of God. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. No, well, I hope you got that statement right that Paul said. Paul said, no, I know in part, but then I will know, know even as I am known. Yes. The first thing we should understand, there's something that the church did a disservice to the, to the kingdom with. Do you want to hear it? Yes, sir. The church told us that perfection is not attainable on this side of life. They sure did. Yes, sir. The church told us that we are going to know more and have more wisdom on everything when we actually, if you're the new creation, then wisdom of everything is available to you now. Not right. the new. The only thing that we're still waiting for is to be put in the glorified body and to be That's given right. eternity. Amen. Amen. Everything else is actually accessible right now. That's right. Yes, if you think you need to wait until you die before you have certain things, then you're going to pr probably die before you get certain yes, things. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Thank you, that's right. Yes, sir. But if you can understand that, hey, understand this. He says, anyone be in Christ, you're a new creature. Not anyone that dies and going to the new world. That's right. My God. He says, you all things have passed away and all things have been made new. Not when you go into the new world, right now. That's but right. now, yes. That's right. Mm -hmm. It says in Romans 8, and I can't remember the verse where it says, the creature, our creation, eagerly awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. Yes, sir. And I remember when I when the Lord gave me that revelation, and you hear us now as fire carriers saying that we are manifested sons and daughters of God. I was reading that. And I was so deep in the spirit, listening to God that the wind, anyone ever felt the wind of God blowing? Yes, sir. Yes, and the sir. wind that was blowing was blowing towards me. And I read it and he said, read it again. And I read it again and it says, creation eagerly awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. And the Lord says, announce yourself. For creation is waiting for your yes. announcement. I lift my hands up and I said, I am the manifested son of God. And the wind that was blowing towards me started blowing out of me. <laughs> oh God. When you catch these revelation, you'll understand yes. that there's method to everything we do and see. Yeah. So when you go out and you announce yourself as the manifestation, the manifested son and daughter of God, you're saying that you're walking in the dominion and power and authority of God right now, of the lion right now. Right. Mm -hmm. name of Jesus. So be mindful. Do not despise knowledge, teaching, discipleship. But go in and understand that it's important for us to go in. Are you hungry? Yes. Because if yes, you're not, sir. you need to become hungry. Yes. Blessed are those. Come on then. Yes. The hunger and thirst. Who hunger and thirst yes. after yes. righteousness. Yes. yes. yes Are you hungry? Yes. Yes, yes, sir. See, the thing is, the church has flipped it. And it says, now, blessed are those that hunger and thirst after power. Yes. <laughs> it's true. It's true, sir. There's nothing that says if you see power, you shall see God. But if you see righteousness, that's right. That's holiness, right. Yes. <laughs> so now we will actually put this back in place. Um, can you read 13 for me, woman of God? Yes, sir. Now abide in faith, hope, charity, 
these three, but the greatest of these is charity. The greatest of these is charity because charity is the source. Yes, sir. Faith is an understanding of confidence in the source. Yes. Hope is a desire or yearning in the source. Yes. But if you remove charity, you remove God. That's and right. Remain in charity, remain in God. Amen. Love, man. This love. Very so I can good. promise you right now, this thing about knowing in part, someone say, uh, out of my head, out of my head. <laughs> out of my head. Out of my head, in the name of Jesus. Very good. This thing about prophesying in part, someone say, out of my head, out of my head, out of my head. Out of my head. I've given us a reason to prophesy lies. Ah, it was in part. <laughs> <laughs> ah, wait. Wow. Just admit you messed up. Repent. Yes. Move on. Amen. Well, I'm hoping that you guys enjoyed this session as much as me. But before I go, let us stand in agreement. Everyone on Facebook, everyone in Zoom, lift your, your right hand before God. Amen. Now let us begin to decree and declare what God has in store for us. Let us speak at the mouth of love so our decrees will never hit the ground. Come on, then. I speak with the mouth of love, with the mouth of God. That my godly inheritance must be manifested in the name of Jesus. I speak with the mouth of charity, with the mouth of God. That no weapon that form against us will prosper. No weapon, no weapon against us will I speak with the mouth of love, with the mouth of God. I speak with the mouth of love, with the mouth of God. That I confront everything that is not like God and destroy them in the name of Jesus. And that I confront everything that is not like God and I destroy them in the name of Jesus. I command with the mouth of charity, with the mouth of God. I command with the mouth of charity, with the mouth of God. You, my godly inheritance. You, you my God, 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 I command you to be manifested in the name of Jesus. I command, I command you to be manifested in the name of Jesus. I speak with the, of with the mouth of charity with the mouth of God. I speak with the mouth of charity with the mouth of God. We are the elect of God. We are the elect of God. We have inherited the kingdom. We, we have, have inherited, inherited the kingdom. We have inherited his character. We, we have, have inherited, inherited, his inherited his We have inherited his power. We, we have inherited, have inherited, inherited his power. And anything. And anything. anything and anyone. And anyone, anyone, that anyone. That says contrary. That, 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 that says contrary. So contrary. With the mouth of love, with the mouth of God, receive fire. With the mouth of love, with the mouth of God, receive fire. In Jesus' matchless name. In Jesus' matchless name. In Jesus' matchless name. Now, come on, one more prayer. Every stubborn situation. Every stubborn situation. Every ailment in our lives, our body. Every ailment in our lives, our body. I speak with the mouth of love, with the mouth of God. All in line now in the name of Jesus. Every sickness, every disease. Every demonic oppression. Every demonic Every demonic the mouth of love with the mouth of God. With the mouth of love, love with the mouth of God. God. Be subject to the name of Jesus. Be subject to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah to your name. I hope to God that you will adapt this as you to your arsenal and learn how to pray with the mouth of God, with the love of God. And all things he says. The mouth of God never fails. Love of God never fails. But where there is prophecy, prophecy fails. Yes, sir. Hallelujah, Jesus. So I am not just prophesying. I'm prophesying with the mouth of God. Amen. The I'm mouth not just declaring, but I declare with the mouth of God. Amen. And it shall not return void in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name and it of shall Jesus. not fail in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I hope Have you guys been. learned something. I see what you're saying, man of God. Anyone else has any water that our oil, our consecrated oil, we will pray for you and then we will bring this to an end.
<laughs> when you're ready, just let me know and we will go in. I am confident in God. I don't know how to explain it. My confidence is through the roof. Like you said, when the Lord showed me this this morning, I was like, God Almighty, thank you because I have been hearing these things for years that made no sense. I'm not sure what's happening, Lady Bridget. Uh, any guy, guys, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So it's on Lady Bridget's side. All right. Are we ready? I'm hearing no. Okay, brilliant. Guys, I want you to be confident, you know. I'm excited. My God. Because I have the mouth of God. I have charity on my side. My God. Amen. I have love on my side. I have truth on my side. And if your prophecy, if anything you speak be underpinned by truth, by love, by charity, you cannot be defeated. Amen? Amen. All right, guys. Amen. When you have your water or your consecrated oil, whatever you have, we'll pray with you. And we'll bring this to an end. Have them, sir. Have water. Yes, sir. Everyone ready? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Now lift your water up, your oil up, whatever you have with the mouth of truth, with the mouth of God. Amen. I impose the will of God upon this oil, this water, this drink, whatever you are actually holding. When you enter the body of anyone that drinks it, you will bring healing with the mouth of God, with the mouth of truth. You will bring deliverance with the mouth of God, with the mouth of truth. You will bring change, breakthroughs in the mouth, with the mouth of God, with the mouth of truth. We decree and declare that it is so and it cannot be an overturn with the mouth of God, with the mouth of truth. In Jesus' matchless name, someone say amen. 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 You go for the glory and honor to your God. I promise you, it's going to be amazing. I'm hoping that you will hold on to this revelation and live your truth in that area. Be disciple. Do not be afraid to be disciple. Your greatness will not be overshadowed by your discipleship. Amen. 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 But your discipleship Amen. with the voice of God, with the voice of charity, will take you into all truth in the matchless right. name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the matchless name of Jesus. Thank you. Jesus. Bless you, Thank you, woman of God, Sister Charlene. Thank you, guys. Bless you, Thank Sister you Betty, I'm talking on Facebook. Bless everyone that's coming in. I give God glory and honor for your lives. And we just thank God for what he's doing. And we will go forth in victory. Who is here for victory? Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. I am here for victory. Amen. Claim your healing, claim your deliverance, claim your breakthrough, your freedom. It's your right. Amen. So look, we are all here. And we will catch you on the next one. God bless you, God bless you. Go with the mouth of truth, with the mouth of God. Final salute. God bless you. Out of here. God bless you.